Tequila. This is the new theme song. You guys are no. You guys. Tequila. Hey, you guys are no. Tequila. Welcome back to New Heights. Yeah, a baby. show that is presented by Wave Sports and Entertainment and still brought to you by our friends at Fireball. The proud, hey, Fireball. the pound, the pound for pound, undisputed number one shot in America. As you all know, that cinnamon delight goes down so smooth. We are your hosts. Cinnamon I'm Travis shot. Kelsey. This is my big bro, Jason Kelsey, out of Cleveland Heights, Ohio, University of Cincinnati alum. How do you do? New episodes come to you just about every single Wednesday, but sometimes they don't. And sometimes they, they'll they just come to you on like a Tuesday or Thursday, but we'll make sure we uh, get all that news to you. This week is coming to you on a Wednesday. Subscribe on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts and follow the show on all social media platforms at New Heights Show with one S. That's at New Heights Show with one S. Jason, <laughs> tell me what we got coming up. Got an incredible show, Trav. As we all know, free agency is up and running. Well, not technically. It will be by tomorrow when deals start to become official. Right now, we're still in the tampering period. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty crazy. Deals are happening left and right. We're trying to do this lead in to the Nick Sirianni episode we got launching right now. Nick uh, Sirianni? Yeah, that's right. Later Head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles? Head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. We <laughs> talked to him. We left the house. You we were... sat down in Indianapolis at the Combine, and we talked to Nick Sirianni, and that's coming to you in this episode. Oh, man. But first, we're going to get to all the news that's happening around the league. Lots of guys, lots of big names signing, friends of ours going, uh, new friends coming. Uh, and, right uh, I mean, I guess we got to talk about me deciding to play another year. Um, <laughs> you are, you're playing? When did you? So, anyways, we're going to touch on all that. So, I hope you guys are in store for an outstanding episode. We're looking forward to giving it to you. And, as always, thanks for supporting. But first, as but first, always, new news. New news coming there at you is. hot. We are back to top five in sports podcasts on Apple uh, and Spotify. It's good five, to be back. Five. It's good to be back. And the 92% oh, is God. are not disappointing. Uh, it's, uh, it's fun to be back out here, uh, doing these podcasts. It's fun to keep talking with my brother and, uh, Trav, you want to hit him up with the, uh, the new merch, new merch, baby. We got some new merch. We talked to you guys last week about the, uh, homage launching uh stamp of the week and no dumb questions. I have those shirts in hand as we speak. Ooh, that's a nice blue. And this is like almost like a Seattle blue and green right there. Oh, I like that. I like that. That's the stamp right there. If I've ever seen Mm -hmm. it. And then we got a little no dumb questions, just dumb people. Just dumb people. You I mean, already know. Give me Gotta that shirt right that. now. I know, right? I feel I feel Take real dumb money, right homage. now. Take my money. Yeah, please visit homage.com slash new heist to check those out. Um and all the other fun shirts that homage uh is has brought to life, man. I, I know my my favorite's still that big Yeti, man. <laughs> Ooh, that big Yeti. I love that big Yeti. Yeah, I don't want to see the Yeti. It has come to our attention that we have some non-sanctioned merch out there that we are not mm. we are not mad at. We're not mad at. Yeah. You guys are pretty clever. On our Reddit page, on the New Heights Reddit page, always with the opinion, uh, came to us with a t-shirt that says, Jason in the streets and Travis in the sheets. Oh. <laughs> All right now. All right now. I think it's clear what... The shirt means Travis in the sheets. I think that that's clear. You think that's clear? What I'm curious about is what is Jason in the like? What do they want me in the streets? What, for? Which streets is we talking which about? Which streets are we? Yeah, it's not good to be in the streets. You get hit by a car. Str- <laughs> are we like? Nah, man. Is this a busy You're street elusive. or a, You're too. You got too much awareness party? for that. You got too much block awareness party? for that. Block parties, bangers. I haven't had a block party forever, man. That'd be a banger. I don't really like to leave my house, so I don't know if we're going to catch me in the streets. That's what I'm saying. Um, it might be the other way around. You got three baby girls. You got kids. You be in them sheets. 
I do. You be in them sheets. Respect I think this is feet. like more of like a desirable thing. <laughs> I think that that's what the shirt is going at. Like they want to um, see you in the sh- in the streets more. I, I really just think that they needed to put me in the shirt, and they figured out a rhyme, <laughs> and they're just—it's a shirt about having Travis in the sheets. That's what the shirt's about. Hey, it's man. not even. Uh, and then you slap a new Heist well, logo on it, and you know the position tight end man. It's just—it's all fitting. <laughs> but I'm out here in the streets, dog. I'm outside. You're out in the streets. You're in the streets. And I am in the outside. Sheets. All right. <laughs> I'll tell you what. It better be like a cold. If I'm going to be in the sheets, it better be like the temp, the room temp's got to be like 55. If I'm be in some sheets, because I I'm going to get way too hot, and then that's just not going to be a situation anybody wants to be a part of. Yeah, nobody wants to be too hot. It's just sweaty, sweaty Yeti comes out. You you uh, you uh, you set the temp on 50. Where do you you set the temp? Where in you? my house. Yeah. I did not set the house at that, 50. What did you set I that? I do set it at You have at, kids, well, so you can't, I guess. I know. My, I, unfortunately, Kylie doesn't. She thinks that kids need to be like warm or something like that. I don't think that's true. <laughs> but I no, would, that's how I, they if grow. it were up to me, it would be, be a breezy 65 all day. That's where the, Ooh, the house would be A at. breezy 65. Nice. Yeah, I'd be windows open 65. Probably terrible energy efficiency. <laughs> but, you know. Yeah, Jason in the It really should be Travis in the streets, Travis in the sheets. Jason in the seats because I'm sitting and I'm watching TV. Or <laughs> That's pretty good. Whatever. Pretty yeah. Good. Yeah. Well, thank you to everybody, uh, all the 92 percenters on our Reddit page and uh, and some of the non-sanctioned uh, merch that we appreciate. So keep coming up with the clever stuff, and uh, I'm sure our team will <laughs> tell you you can't do that. Yeah. Um, so hey, yeah, we're not you we're not a big first. cease and desist. We're, we're not, not a big cease and desist crew. You know, we Especially encourage if- creativity. <laughs> we encourage our artists. <laughs> And uh, speaking of creativity, we got a fan mention of the week right now, a uh, fan right now. comment of the week. Awesome comment on the YouTube video from earlier this week from the Daniel Jeremiah episode. This one is coming at you from Sarah Kaplan, who said, Jason, can you please sort NFL players into Hogwarts houses? And I love this, and I think we're going to do it right now. Um, Trav, are you aware, can you name the different Hogwarts houses? Um, yeah, one is... Don't uh... read it, don't read it. Pick your eyes up. <laughs> One do is read do not read it. Is Hogwarts not a house? I thought Hogwarts was a house. Hogwarts is the school. Oh, okay. Well, there you no, go. That's good. I mean, that's a good starting point. So then, which house is Harry Potter in? Harry Potter's in the Magic House. <laughs> <laughs> he's got the he's got the wand and he does the magic. Oh gosh, this is good. How far off am I? You're not even in the ballpark, but you're you're in the, you're in the school. <laughs> what? You're in the school. So what school does he go to? He goes to Hogwarts. Hogwarts. But you what? remember? You remember? Yeah, you know how uh, at uh, at Cleveland Heights they had that small schools initiative. Small schools. And there were small schools within the big school. That's oh, kind yeah. of the way Hogwarts is. There's four different um, houses that are within Hogwarts. You have Gryffindor. You have Hufflepuff. You have Ravenclaw, and you have Slytherin. Okay. And I don't know how the actual, like, determination of which house you get into goes. But to me, it gets down to Gryffindor is, like, good people with ambition. Like, okay. good people that are trying to to fight for goodness. Then you have mm-hmm. Slytherin, which is bad people with ambition. Mm. Okay? Which is, like, you know, it's, it's, it's bad people that are excited about being bad. Um, and then you got Ravenclaw, which is really – that's really smart people. That's the AP class, uh, AP okay. house. And then you got Hufflepuff, which I think that's just – all the leftover kids go to Hufflepuff. So um, All the misfits? All the misfits? I think it's just people with no ambition go to Hufflepuff. That's how I do it. <laughs> so just, we got – Just out here yeah. kicking it? Yeah. I mean, well, they're, they're good people, but they're they're Hufflepuffs. This, is a, this segment just got so much fucking fun. All right. So, do you want to go down the list of players? You just th- start throwing names at me. Let's see how, how it right. happens. Uh, Jason Kelsey. Where's Jason Kelsey? I mean, I'm going to put myself in Gryffindor. Come on, baby. What? You can't just put yourself in the be- the best house. Is that I mean, and that's people. where that's where Harry was. Harry, Ron, Hermione, all of them. Right. Huh? Do I get in Gryffindor? I'd put you in Gryffindor. You're in Gryffindor for sure. I feel like if you're not in Gryffindor, you kind of. Ravenclaw. I mean, Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff are very respectable houses, but Gryffindor right. is like, yeah. Jalen Hurts. Gryffindor. We can't put everyone in Gryffindor, Jason. I mean, if you're going to throw Jalen Hurts at me, I'm putting him in Gryffindor. 
All right. Um, Chris Long. Chris Long? <sighs> Gryffindor. <laughs> Everybody's a Gryffindor. You're asking me all, all my friends. NFL all NFL players? All, all right. All my friends. Uh, who, do, who doesn't Jason know? Uh, Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins. Ravenclaw. 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 Okay. Smart. All right. All right. What about uh, Patty Mahomes? Patty Mahomes, man, I want to throw him in Slytherin because he just whooped our ass in the Super Bowl. But I got to say, I do think Patty Mahomes is a Gryffindor guy. He I doesn't do. get excited about, yeah. I think he's a good guy with ambition, so I'm going Gryffindor. All right. Uh, Aaron Rodgers. Oh, my gosh. Don't throw this out right now. That's too newsy. There's too much going on with Aaron. <laughs> I'm, ever I'm since he's ever Aaron. since he's got ever since he's got like the long hair though, like the John Wick look, it's kind of yeah. gave him a little cloud. Like he's yeah, kind of like no. the. I mean, like he's Aaron's, excited about. I don't. I don't want to comment. Being on the Aaron. enemy. I'm leaving Aaron off. I'm leaving. I'm, I'm deferring on Aaron. <laughs> it's, it's I'm deferring a, that's on Aaron. not a part of this segment. You have to say the house. Slytherin. He's in Slytherin. Wow, okay? he said it. Fucking god damn it. I don't even know what Slytherin is. All right, uh, all right. Since we're on the since we're on the Slytherin train, what about Joey Burrow? Joey Burrow, yeah. Man, do you know Ohio enough about guy. him? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm so he's an Ohio guy. He kind of has this like you know very charismatic way to him. I mean, if you're asking quarterbacks, quarterbacks are going Gryffindor or Slytherin all day, and I'm going to put Burrow in Gryffindor. For you, he's probably in Slytherin. <laughs> to Chiefs fans, he's a Slytherin guy. You already know. A very Burrowhead? respected. Man, dude. Very respected. You got a whole stadium named after you. <laughs> That's crazy, man. Brandon Graham. Brandon Griff, Gryffindor. Stop asking me my team. What? Me like, Brandon yeah. Graham is 1,000% Slytherin. No, if he's not you're, a Slytherin guy. What? No. How much no. shit he talks? All right, all right. What about uh, Russell Wilson? Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson... Man, God, he was in Gryffindor forever, and then I think I think he's in Slytherin now. I think he's in Slytherin. Slytherin? I, I thought I was thinking he was like a Hufflepuff. Like he's. I mean, he, he's yeah. You know what? I'll do that. I'll go Hufflepuff. Hufflepuff. <laughs> no, if you're quarterback, you got to be Gryffindor. I or don't Slytherin. even know what I'm talking about. I'm going Slytherin. <laughs> you're going Slytherin. All right, uh, Jimmy G. Jimmy G. Slytherin. Jimmy Garoppolo. Slytherin? Videos of porn. Yeah, I mean, he's got like videos of porn stars going out to restaurants and stuff oh, like that. Oh, easy, easy. It doesn't make you a bad guy. It doesn't make you uh, a bad person, but it's a Slytherin <laughs> move. It's not a Gryffindor move. If you're quarterback, you're either Gryffindor or Slytherin. You put Kirk Cousins in Ravenclaw. Yeah, he's a he's an outlier. Outlier? Yeah. Ask me a coach. Ooh. Uh, Bill Belichick. Oh, Slytherin all day. Slytherin? Slytherin. All day. Yeah. Super talented, very intelligent, but like Slytherin. What about uh, Derek the King Henry? Derek Henry? Yes. Man, that's, that's a Gryffindor guy right there. The Gryffindor, right? But he's kind of yeah. got that. He's yeah. got that. I'm going Gryffindor and Derek Henry. All right, all right. And Dominica Sue. Oh, Slytherin. I just played with him. Great guy. <laughs> Great guy, but he's. Great guy. He's Slytherin? Slytherin. All right. He's. he's because you got good people within Slytherin, but there's like a certain mentality that Slytherin comes with, and it's like this, like, it's a defensive mentality. It's, it's a, yeah, I'm enough, you know. Yeah. Dude, that's, you have that mentality. I know. I'm you might be Slytherin. I could be Slytherin. Dude. I could definitely be Slytherin. There's 100%. If I wasn't so good, I'd be in Slytherin. I fit a lot of the qualities. I'm a team guy. Well, team guy, Slytherin's team, too. Death Eaters are a big team. What about, uh, what about a guy like Tony Romo? What was Tony? Tony Romo? Slytherin. I mean, anybody on the Cowboys is Slytherin. Slytherin. If you play for the Eagles, if you play for the Cowboys, you're Slytherin. That's the this, is, this has turned into just whoever's your like enemy is yeah. Slytherin. I mean, that's essentially what the book is. Yeah, all right. I mean, what about Jerry Snape. Jones? Shout out, what about shout Jerry out Jones? to Severus Snape. So Jerry, Jerry, Jerry Jones, Jerry like, Jones is he like the head only, of Slytherin? Who's the head, head of Slytherin? Slytherin. Lord Who's Voldemort. Who's the head of? Tom Riddle. Tom Riddle's the head <laughs> of... Know. Tom Riddle is Lord Voldemort, one and the same. Um, yeah, Jerry Jones is for sure Slytherin. He's Lord Voldemort. He's probably got Horcruxes scattered all through uh, the United States. 
Jason Garrett being one of them. I don't even know what a Horcrux is. Am I speaking like a different language to you right now? Do you even understand this? Dude, all this is way over my head. What's a Horcrux? Well, a Horcrux is when somebody uh, separates their soul and they put their soul into another object or person. (laughs) (laughs) You see what I'm saying? You see where we're going in this? It makes sense now, right? (laughs) Yo! (laughs) (laughs) That is fucking hilarious. It makes sense, right? I'm talking about one way over my head. Dude, that is... That's pretty fucking good right there. (laughs) I think that's enough. I think we've covered a a good amount of what uh, Sarah was kind of asking us to do. Um, If you guys have any other people to add to certain houses, or if you disagree or agree with me, uh, you know, uh, I love talking anything uh, Harry Potter universe. So, yeah. Oh, man. Only thing I know about Harry Potter is that Disney has has a really good roller coaster. Yeah, it's it's not even in Disney. Really good. Really Harry Potter good. is part of Universal Studios. It's not part of Disney World. It's, it's, it's they're all, both in Orlando. It's not all called Disney World. <laughs> hey, before we keep going, we got to talk about one of our partners, Fireball. Fireball takes any event to the next level, especially celebrating winning the big game. Fireball's iconic cinnamon flavor tastes fire and goes down easy. Ooh. It's the ultimate crowd pleaser. That's why it's the number one shot in the country. Fuego ball. What I really like about the fireball shooters is that there's no shot glass needed. You just crack it open and knock it back. Jason, are you a big fireball guy? Huge, sir. Um, Yeah, I'm a big fan of cracking it and enjoying it. And uh, that's exactly what you do at fireball. Uh, Wherever you purchase your fine spirits, make sure you check out fireball. That's cinnamon delight. If there's one thing I get asked all the time, it's how do I maintain my health during the offseason? And the answer is simple. I take AG1 by Athletic Greens. Man, that was an easy answer. You guys probably didn't expect that Jason Kelsey is a big greens guy, did you? Trav, this is way more than basic greens. This is like nine products wrapped into one. Just one serving of AG1 covers all my nutritional basis and long-term gut health with 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food source high-quality ingredients. Mm, Get you some of that gut health, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. And if you're listening to this show and have been saying to yourself, man, I want to be as healthy as Jason Kelsey, you're in luck because Athletic Greens is giving you guys an incredible deal with five free travel packs plus one year supply of vitamin D. And we all could use some vitamin D in our Ooh, lives. So good. Like Not Travis right said, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. This is their best offer yet. And you can only get it at athleticgreens.com slash new heights. That's athleticgreens.com slash new heights. All right. I think we stalled long enough, but we are moving on to 10 or 12 or kind of in that realm-ish bold topics where we uh, recap uh, this year, this week. We're going to recap NFL free agency so far. And uh, let's start with all the free agency news uh, in the football world. And uh, we all have been waiting for Jason Kelsey to tell everybody exactly what he's doing for next year. And I think you owe it to your team. I think you owe it to your teammates to make this decision right here, right now, so that they know what they have to do in free agency coming up. What are you talking about? What do you mean? I have to tell, what about free agency? You have to break the news here on New Heights. Travis, I announced I was playing another year yesterday. What are you talking about? What? Oh You're God. playing? <laughs> This is the biggest news of the week. Who cares about Aaron Rodgers when you got Jason Kelsey coming back for another year? Woo! Did you? Uh, this is are you, electric. Do you still think you're on Saturday Night Live? I'm so fucking pumped. I am you're so pumped. You're a professional actor right now. All right, you called my bluff. Everybody knows you're coming back. Um, you, you tweeted out. I have put much thought into whether it makes sense to play another season after talking it over with my wife and many other friends and family. You didn't ask me what I thought, but I'll keep going. I didn't. I have decided to return for another year. Thank you to all my supporters (laughs) and detractors. That was a long one. I didn't never even heard of that. (laughs) For fueling me. I ain't fucking done yet. With an exclamation point. I love it, man. You fired up the entire football world. Um, ESPN was tweeting it. 
NFL was tweeting it. Everybody was on top of it, man. Biggest news of the yeah. offseason. Congrats, brother. Way to, way Thank to, you. Way to make you. a splash. Way to, way to make a cannonball splash. You were more way of a can not, opener guy. You were more of a can to, opener guy. I had a good can opener back in the Forest Hills Park or Cane Park. Yeah, I was about to say, there's Cumberland. no pool like Forest Hills. Cumberland. Cumberland. That's Cumberland. right. I didn't retire again. That's pretty much the news. It's I'm still playing football. I, I wish it wasn't news, to be honest with you. It's just something that like I really think I, I go back and forth on, and I think it's important to actually think about this seriously because, as you know, Trav, there's a lot that goes into playing a season. It's not just the physical part. It's the mental part. It's, it's everything that it encumbers. And, um, you know, I try to think about it as hard as I can, obviously playing in the Super Bowl. You know, there's a little bit less time to think about it than I normally have. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was important to make a decision before free agency started or at least let the Eagles before free agency started know, you know, that I was I was confident in coming back another year. You know, obviously there's there's money to be spent. There's deals to be made. And I want to make sure that Philadelphia has, uh, you know, a full uh, – I want to make sure that they're um, in the best position possible because – Obviously, I'm coming back because I want to win. Obviously, I'm coming back because Jalen Hurts is there. We have a lot of good people around the building, and I feel really confident in uh, our coaches and teams. So the fun time to be an Eagle, man. You hear that, yeah. ladies and gentlemen? Selflessness. He wants to make sure that the Eagles have the best opportunity, but also, well, I, also I want to. You got to make that bread. You got to make that bread, well, and the bread's good. I'm not gonna lie, the bread's good, but I, I got a lot of bread already in the basket. You know, this is just. Oh. Oh, nah, nah, this is like nah, you know, nah. yeah. This is like unlimited bread at this point, like uh, unlimited uh, breadsticks over at uh, Mister uh, Unlimited. I shouldn't say that. That's a good way to go broke. Is thinking of your money like that. Listen, I you know I I think uh, after after thinking about a lot with Kylie, the biggest thing, and I think she said it really well. You know, if you're still like thinking about this and you're going back and forth and you know you're 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 wondering if you have any doubt that you're going to want that you're going to regret playing, you should keep playing. Because clearly that's what I want to do. You know, my body's mm-hmm. banged up from the season. I just got done with a really long one. So right now it's hard to imagine doing it again. Um, you know, once a full off season gets underway, once I have a chance to recover and work myself back up to uh, to uh, being in the best shape possible, you know, I think it became clear when she kind of said that. She was like, you know what, if you're still doubting yourself and going back and forth this long, you still want to play. Yeah, yeah. Kai. Way to bring him back, Kai. Ah. <laughs> And that's some good that's some good life advice right there. If you're yeah, juggling that, it. There's also the last thing you want to I, do is yeah. Howard Mudd gave me really good advice, which is essentially the same thing, just kind of summarized way different, which is when in doubt, don't. <laughs> I was like, Howard, I don't know. I I have doubt about a lot of things. Like when do I what do I which fr- like how do I look at the thing? But that's why it's a great saying, because it works no matter how you look at it. <laughs> What a guy, man. What a guy. Well, I know we're all pumped. And, um, yeah. I know we're all pumped to see you come back, brother. Let's, uh, let's jump into some more stuff. Was it, who did you, actually, who did you, uh, did you like call up, uh, someone from the Eagles or did everybody just find out via Twitter? So, contacted, um, my agent, JB, Jason Bernstein. And, uh, you know, I think him and Howie had been in contacts and going back and forth. And uh, they had talked already that day. And I was like, well, I think, you know, I, I, I feel confident in saying that I'm going to come back for another year at this point. And then uh, talked to Howie soon there right after that. Him and JB talked and, um, you know, that's kind of how it happens. Once it's right mutually, um, you know, wanted, right? And the Eagles have been very upfront saying they wanted me back the whole time. So talk to Howie, talk to Nick. You know, kind of make the calls. Everybody's excited you're coming back and kind of go from there. Well, we know um, the best center in the league is going back to the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, I love you, Creed. Creed, I love you, Creed. Yeah. Creed. All right. Well, then we'll get another clean cut at it. Um, <laughs> well, we know that the uh, the best center in the NFC is going back to the Eagles. and um, <laughs> But the Eagles did lose some key pieces to the defense so far. Added a few guys, added a few guys as well as uh, lost a few guys. But um, Javon Hargrave, four years, 84 mil. He was an absolute beast for you guys Damn. last year. Yeah, and he got yeah. paid. Got paid yeah, a lot I mean, of money. He deserves happy it. For, happy for my man, Grave Digger. Uh, 
Javon's one of the hardest guys I've ever had to block, um, especially from a pass blocking standpoint. Um, this is a huge acquisition by the 49ers. Him, Armstead, I mean, they got they are stacked all over defense. Um, you know, it was already a, a tough game against them last year, and Javon's not going to make it any easier. So that's a, that's a tough one because obviously, you know, that's – you know, the 49ers – um, you know, that's <laughs> a big rival they, of ours right now. Got, big they, game they for us. Better again. I don't know how they they the, did, and the, there's other moves are. they've made. Yeah, they're not slowing down. So they are not. Slowing Javon's going to help them out big time. So you guys lost. Uh, congrats, jo- Javon. Interior D line, and then interior second level. T.J. Edwards, linebacker for you guys, is uh, on a three year deal with the Bears. Making yep. some moolah over there. He's staying in the staying in the NFC too. Happy for TJ. TJ has been a a really uh, big part. He had a great year last year, and he's been a guy that you've seen get better every single year. You've you've seen that improvement. He's a smart player. He's instinctive. Um, you know, I think that he was a guy that you know, you, you know, when you're like playing certain guys early in their career, and you can just tell that they get it, like. They react mm-hmm. to things well. They they Good back feel for the blocks. Game. Or they have he has he has great feel for the game of football. Um, yeah, and I think he's you know obviously would have loved to have him back in Philadelphia, uh, but TJ's gonna do great over there in Chicago. Big deal for him. And uh, you know this is a guy that I mean you love when guys come where he's come from, make a name for themselves and get the big payday. This is the best part of free agency for me is watching guys that earn their money. Went out there, took the licks, you know, got better, um, made a name for themselves, and now they're going to uh, have a life changing amount of money thrown at them. So, yeah. really, really happy for TJ Edwards. Shout out to TJ. Eagles bringing back Brandon Graham though for uh, for another year. You and BG, BG, man, you guys are like you guys are like the the, the two staples right now, man. You guys are like yeah, well, Philly's yeah, the, the, Philly's pride and joy, man. There's been you know obviously me and BG. Uh, Lane Johnson, and there's still one guy out there, Big Fletcher Cox. Come uh, on, Fletch. Well, I, I, I never tell anybody to do with their money. Um, but obviously, you know, all four of us from this year played together for over a decade in Philadelphia. So Damn. it's rare to play with that lo- many guys for that long. Uh, that means you got to be doing something right if you're going to last that long. And, Heck yeah. Uh, and Brandon's been the leader. He's the most tenured guy not only on the Eagles, but in all of Philadelphia sports. Uh, he's going on his 14th season with the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, Damn. I did I not know. know that. Well, this year, I mean, knock on wood, if he if he starts, I think, eight games or something like that, maybe less, maybe six, uh, he'll have the all-time record for most games played uh, by a Philadelphia Eagle. He'll pass David Akers. Let's go, dog. I know. That's pretty, so, that's pretty freaking cool to have on the resume, man. Especially really one team. Especially one team. And, and he's just long. a great – he's a great teammate. You know, obviously, Gryffindor guy. You know, just a really, really good dude. Um, you know, I, I feel, I feel I like a nerd just things, understanding you. what you're saying I mean, when listen, you say Listen, there's this nothing now. wrong with being a nerd. You're, are, you, are you not? I'm a nerd about you, football for sure. Are you nerdophobic? What, you don't like nerds? No, I love, I love being a nerd. That's why you see it's making yeah. me smile. I, yeah. <laughs> Brandon tweeted out uh, – it wasn't about the money. I haven't officially signed yet, but it's pretty much done. I'm coming back. It wasn't about the money. I love Philly. I don't want to miss a championship with Jalen. Jalen is the man. Love nothing about Jason, though. Nothing yeah. about Jason in here. I mean, but, let's be honest. Yeah, I know. I know he cares about you, right? He, t- he likes. No, you I mean, you. listen. Me and BG got a lot of love for each other, but you know, I ain't gonna win as a championship. Jalen's gonna you know, be up there. So, you know. Maybe I'm Hufflepuff. It. Maybe that's why I'm Hufflepuff. I don't even fucking know. Eagles re-signing running back Boston Scott to a one-year deal. Big deal for us. Boston's a big. Uh, I mean, dude, like he's he's kind of like that utility knife for us, and uh, he's just whenever Swiss he Army gets knife. an opportunity, he uh, he finds a way to make the most of it. Not the tallest guy, but he's going to go in there. He's going to be accountable. He's going to do everything he can, and he just makes plays, it's especially against the Giants. Man. The Giant Killer, Boston Scott, the- back in the building. Boston's one of those guys, man. You just get him in space with one on one with a guy. He's going to find luck. a way to make that first guy miss. And that's exactly. such a that's such a key part of being a running back is being just able make to make that miss. one guy miss. If you can do that, I mean, you are going to be a freaking star, or you're yeah. definitely going to keep getting contracts in the NFL. We uh, can block most of them. You just got to make one guy miss. Hey, how about this breaking news? Uh, the Eagles uh, are at work again. 
we have officially re-signed James Bradbury. Ah, All pro quarterback from this past Bradbury. year. Bradbury. Yeah. Juju uh, Smith-Schuster's favorite guy. We've uh, re-signed him. Uh, <laughs> three-year deal worth $38 million with upside to get to $44. 20 million guaranteed. That's, I mean, um, that's a hefty a number, deal. bud. Yeah, it's a that's hefty right. number. Shout out to Bradbury, man. I thought he was a great great player when we played him. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm excited about it. Um, not only is he a good player, but just a great teammate. Good dude all around. Had a great year for us. Was a big reason why we had so much success on defense. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I'm really big on, smart, I'm big on smart football players, man. He's, you could tell he, he's, a, he's a physical specimen, too. Like, he's not, he's a big corner. He is. Long he's arms. Long. Fast dude. Um, but, yeah. I'm Tough big on smart on football players, man. You got to be a smart football player out there. And he's uh, he's got – he's full package uh, cornerback in the league, man. So happy for you guys defensively keeping uh, at least some of your guys. Yeah, man. Um, really happy for James. He's earned every penny of that. Um, he's played it. So, yeah, awesome for the Eagles. Way to go, Howie. There we go, Howie. This guy's, this guy's making moves, man. This guy's making hey, moves. Just get the tequila ready. Tequila's coming. James, get ready for tequila shots. Apparently everybody's doing it. Tequila. Bum, 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 bum. Instead of, instead of saying tequila, you just got to start. <laughs> tequila. <laughs> this is the new theme song for Eagles. You guys are no. You guys. Tequila. Hey! <laughs> Tequila. Classic songs make me want to go drink right now. And you just can't help but say tequila. And move your shoulders like this. <laughs> when you move your shoulders like this, are you moving your shoulders? Or are you going? With That's how I run routes. You can't you, get lost you, in these. But when you're doing this right now. Are you are you moving your shoulders or are you butt cheeking it? Because I'm butt cheeking. All traps. I'm going right butt All traps. Cheek, lip. Oh, okay. <laughs> Big news in Kansas City. We just signed left tackle Jawan Taylor to a four year, eighty million dollar deal. Big money That's coming big in money. to protect Pat Mahomes. Yeah. Can't wait to get the big guy in the building. Um yeah. I mean he was a, he was a stud in uh in Jacksonville. Can't say he wasn't. Nope. He was an absolute. Offensive line was already good out there in KC, and this is a this is a big move. Oh my god! Big gosh. move, man. Big move, baby. Get him in the building. Get him in the building. Get him situated. Ugh. Giants are sending the third round pick to Las Vegas for Darren Waller. D Wall Wall Street. D Wall is on the Giants now. That's a big move. Ah, oh, that's Darren Waller is officially in Slytherin. He just uh, <laughs> he was he was already with the Raiders, so he might have been there. He was the in Slytherin time. for you. Yeah, now he, he's he just a Slytherin guy. He's I'm gonna say he's Gryffindor, man. That guy he's he's a dog. He's got great <laughs> ambition. Good person. Good soul. Um, yeah, that's wild. Vegas uh, to New York. I wasn't expecting that, especially. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I'm trying to think. They have a they have a young tight end out there in Bellinger. That's uh, that'd be an interesting uh, duo they got. It's pretty cool. Maybe it's they'll nice use duo. a lot of twelve. That's, a, you know. that's it's always it's always a mismatch. Twelve personnel. Twelve is baby. a good personnel. I think it's 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 uh, it's an interesting. You know, do you go base? Do you go nickel? You know, who are you matching up on the? And especially if you, if you have a, a receiver like Darren Waller or like Travis Kelsey, where it's like uh, you want to play nickel, but if you put nickel out there, it might be a little bit hard to stop the run. If you got a good run game, that's where the twelve personnel is the best. You, you can say? run well out of twelve personnel because everything's based off of the run. You know what I mean? Yeah, I can flank well, when, it, when you're worried about the run. When you're worried about the run, I can flank. That's how you do it. That's what play action is. It's flanking. The Raiders. This is arguably the most controversial addition in the entire free agency. Ooh. Raiders signed wide receiver Jacoby Myers Why to a three-year deal. What? Patriot Roulette. Was he a part of that? Was he a part of that? He's the one that threw a dart right to Chandler Jones's chest. He was the second lateral. <laughs> he was the second lateral. Wow! Dude. This is con- this so is the crazy. Raiders, 
the Raiders are signing the guy that won them the, the game. The guy who handed them the game. <laughs> this is it's nuts. To this a three insane. year, 33. So he's getting 11 a year. He's getting 11 a to year. A team basically, to the team he gave the game. Do you think this was agreed to before that game? This is crazy. You think this, do, McDaniels just went up to him? It's like Jacoby. I'll sign you to do a three year deal if you if you hand this one to us. Do you and think? Like, how, it was just like, like how quick, can I how can I make this happen? Lateral it to me. I'll be right behind you the whole I time. I know we just called this QB draw. <laughs> to go into overtime. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Chandler. Hey man. <laughs> well, I mean it is cra- it's a crazy coincidence, at the very least. It's wild, man. It's wild. More power to him though. 21 Thanks. mil guaranteed. That's a lot. It's a lot of guaranteed money out there in Las Vegas, Nevada. That is. Um, so go ahead and enjoy, it, Jacoby. You can go quick in Las Vegas, Nevada, too. Or you could double it. Yeah, that's how it goes quick. Thinking like that. Mm, yeah. Well, you can be stupid. Just don't be real stupid. You know what I mean? Like that's the deciding factor for me. I ask myself, like, is this all. stupid? majority of the shit I do is stupid, but you can't be real stupid. As soon as you're real let's stupid, just that's... Be, let's just not be stupid. Let's be... Let's What's be... the fun in that? There's no fun in not <laughs> being stupid. That's what Stevie Bogus is. That was the best advice I ever got from Stevie Bogus, baby. Coach Bogus, are, am I... High, I don't know. You can be stupid. Just don't be real stupid. Real stupid, that's when you go to jail. Yeah. All right now. What's What's regular stupid? Regular Real stupid stupid's going to jail. What's regular stupid? Remember when you used to play uh, Poop Dollar? We got it from Workaholics. Yeah, we were playing that at Woody's. Poop Dollar! Got Yancey, got Yancey Gates to pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, shout out to Yancey. That's that hilarious. That was so funny. Oh, gosh. <laughs> God, we got to bring that back. <laughs> Poop Dollar was a... That was... See? That's stupid. You could be stupid. Just yeah, don't be real stupid. That, that is stupid. For those of you, for those of you that don't know what poop dollar is, I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure we, we I got to explain. From, I think we'd need to explain it because uh, poop dollar is when we did we did just like when if we found like dog poop on the sidewalk, right? Like I, I don't remember actually. Is. Like yeah, I don't remember. I don't actually think like you use a piece of pooping, human, human poop. Like yeah, you don't use human poop. Maybe they did in workaholics, but yeah, we didn't. We saw a turd on the sidewalk. Took a. I think we I think we did more than a one dollar bill. I think it was, it was like, like a five dollar bill, so he made it like really. Oh shit, five dollars! <laughs> yeah. You sandwich the poop in the dollar bill or the five dollar bill in this case, and then you just leave it on the sidewalk and you just watch people pick it up, and it's it's a lot of fun, and especially if you're drinking beers at a college bar and uh, sitting out on the porch. The anticipation, you already. The know. moment somebody picks it up, of course, everyone yells, "Poop, poop dollar!" dollar! <laughs> <laughs> and the, as soon as the person realizes they pick up the money and there's pooping and you hear a whole bunch of jamokes screaming poop dollar from the balcony and uh, yeah. the anticipation you when you see somebody walking down the street, yeah. they're like, oh, my God, oh, my God, here it comes, 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 here it comes. Here it comes. I mean, like, oop, oop. <laughs> poop dollar. Poop dollar! <laughs> yeah. I mean, dude, it's, it's right. the equivalent of catching like a big... <laughs> A big bluefin tuna out on the big seas. I mean, it's it's city fishing. I mean, it's got to it's city fishing. We have big old Yancey Gates, big six nine, two hundred and seventy pound center for the Cincinnati Bearcats. That's my guy, man. Yancey was the best. Played high school AAU AAU ball with him. Was an absolute dog in the Big East. Ain't nothing wrong with being getting got on poop dollar. How are you supposed to know? You just see a five on the ground. <laughs> sure enough, fish on. <laughs> uh, oh, nice. So, uh, getting back to free agency, day one, the biggest spenders so far in free agency are the Denver Broncos. Man, they are spending a lot of money these past the two years in the offseason. Last year, too? Uh, I think up. they were close. It was either them or, or Oakland. Oakland. It was either them or Vegas. It might have been It might have been the Chargers, too. Chargers made some acquisitions. Anyways. All right. Um, Broncos are at already at two hundred over two hundred million. The Bears are roughly around a hundred and twenty million. Uh, the Falcons are up there over a hundred mil, and uh, the Niners, Raiders, and Chiefs are all right around eighty to eighty five million dollars already on the first day. 
God damn, the Niners got a good team. Where they got all this money from? Dude, they got young quarterback, man. Young quarterback. You don't. You haven't paid a quarterback yet. You're going to have some cap space. That's true. Chiefs, what do you buy you guys? You guys spent $80 million. You don't got a young quarterback. You got one of the highest paid quarterbacks. Yeah. we, uh, we Unfortunately, we uh, we let a few guys uh, slip out. And shout out to my dog, Frank Clark. So this is total money. Mm-hmm. This is the biggest spender so far. That's like the whole contract? Yeah, all the contracts. Yeah, but they didn't spend $80 million. You guys are spending tw- – it's a it's a 20 per year deal. Yeah, it's just what we get, what we are – They're just adding up. Mean, doesn't even matter. All the years. Um, the number of all the years. years. This is a, yeah. That's a dumb metric. I'm, I'm over it. <laughs> so let's talk some, uh, let's talk some Aaron Rodgers because it's – it's so interesting and so fun to talk about. Uh, we're recording right. this on a Tuesday, and free agency does start on Wednesday, so we could be talking to you about something that's already happened that uh, we don't know about. Yeah, yeah. or that yeah. Yeah. What we do know is that Aaron Rodgers has provided the New York Jets with a list of free agents that he would like them to target and acquire. Yeah, it's also known as a list of demands. He's 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 provided the New York Jets with a list of demands. We're full blown hostage situation at this point. Hostage, with the New York Jets. hostage situation. I am the captain now. I need a briefcase with three hundred million dollars. With Odell Beckham in the briefcase. <laughs> I mean, I, I get it. Dude. Listen, the Jets are stacked on defense. Their head coach is a defensive coach. Yeah. Um, uh, hello, Aaron coming over there, coach. it could be a match made in heaven. He just wants to make sure they got a target that he feels comfortable with. Yeah, they already they got a bunch of young guys that uh, that can play some ball now. Well, apparently they can't play ball good enough because Aaron's saying he wants one of these guys. Aaron Rodgers has provided the New York Jets with a wish list of free agents he would like them to target and acquire. Per sources, it includes Randall Cobb, Alan Lazard, Mercedes Lewis, and Odell Beckham Jr. Damn. And this just in, the Jets have met the uh, the wish list. They've met it. They have officially signed free agent wide receiver Alan Lazard to a four-year, $44 million deal with $22 million guaranteed. So, <laughs> Breaking the bank. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if they folded or if they just, like, answered the bell, but yeah. the Jets are all in on the Rodgers deal. We've got a hostage I mean, situation. A they're, trying to keep, they're trying to keep all the hostages alive. Yeah. Hostage yeah, situation. You give us one, we give you one. You give us one and also come to play our quarterback. That's kind of where we're at. Be interested to see how that plays out. So is so they got yes. Randall Cobb and Mercedes Lewis. Both have been in Green Bay with Aaron and uh, Alan Lazard as well. Um, and then the 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 one that was just interesting was Odell Beckham Jr. He's like, yo, I want OBJ. Odell. I want Odell. Must have liked his uh, work. Who doesn't want Odell? Or man, hey, listen, he looked like a beast. He looks he strong. He always looks like a beast. He looks does. strong, and I think he on purposely caught every single ball with one hand. Just yeah. to just to add some flair to it, um, at least that's the did only the whole thing without a shirt on to make sure he showed off how swole he is. He's swole yeah. right now. He's been working. Yeah. He has been working. He's got those Saquon quad, quads out too, man. Ooh. <laughs> big man, big man Sun's playing out, wide out. out. Not right now. Yeah, the uh, the Aaron Rodgers situation is still up in the air as of this moment. Uh, so we're going to run through every Aaron Rodgers situation uh, that might happen just so we have uh, touched it by tomorrow because who knows what is going to happen within the next hour. Here's the first bit of news. Rodgers goes to the Jets. Oh, what? my gosh. This is game changing. <laughs> he really ah. left Green Bay? Joe Douglas pulls out the move of the century and lures Aaron this Rodgers is crazy. to the Jets. They signed is- Alan Lazard. To a big contract after Aaron clearly says, sign Alan Lazard. And all of a sudden, he's in. He's in. That's pretty wild, man. Honestly, never thought I'd ever see Aaron leave leave Green Bay. I thought it was one of those just matches that just went on forever and ever and ever. It's hard to find that. It's hard to find that. It seems like all these guys play like at least one year someplace else almost. It's crazy. Didn't Brett Favre, didn't he go to the Jets too? Brett Favre went to the Jets. Um, yeah, I don't know if anybody else went to the Jets, but Peyton Manning obviously went to the Broncos. Tom Brady went to the Bucks. He might go to Miami. Who the hell knows what's going to happen with Tom Brady? Yeah, no, no. I'm saying this is crazy that a Green Bay legend gets traded yeah. to the Jets. It's yeah, crazy. the predecessor crazy. to him goes to the exact same team. Yeah. The next bit of news that might happen with Aaron Rodgers. This just in. Rodgers has decided to stay with the Packers. What? I know. He's F- staying? F- after all I this, I never would have thought he was going to stay. Hey, after oh all my this, gosh. Oh. After all this, 
I mean, there's just there's so much conflict between them over the years. You would never expect them to still do it. It's hard this to pull whole that time trigger. when when you've been in one place that long. It's hard to pull that trigger. Like you know, for as someone who just almost retired, it you know, yeah. when in doubt, don't. And he clearly had doubt, so he stayed in Green Bay. You know, he must have been thinking long and hard in that cabin. Dude, he just seems like one of those quarterbacks that's like just needs to go, you know, to a different place. But obviously, he's happy where he is, man. What do you What do you think that cabin smelled like that he was staying in that didn't have any electricity or running water or uh, toilets? Oh man, that's a good question. I don't even know. Um, it might have had probably sage. Probably sage. Right? It, it had to have like a mildewy. Mildewy? You know, like wood. You know, like wood. That Wet wood. You don't. Yeah. Like whenever I'm in a cabin that, like, like an outdoor like wooded structure, there's uh-huh. that like very, um, almost like dewy smell, and it's just mm. always there. And apparently, it helps you decide where you want to go in free agency. <laughs> All right. Next bit of news. Um, this just in. Hey, Rogers goes to another team, not the Jets. <gasps> what? what? That's I thought it was either Green Bay or the Jets at this point. I never I knew. Get, I can't even get excited for that. That's not Who happening. knew that Miami... <laughs> the Dolphins? What? He went to the Dolphins? Who knew that Miami, Chicago, Houston... I mean, what other team can we pile on this? Oh, Rams, uh, uh, 49ers. If he goes to the 49ers. D.C., Washington. He went to Washington? Who knew? Who knew that all these teams were in on this Aaron Rodgers deal? This is crazy, man. This just in, Aaron Rodgers decides to retire and start a podcast. What? What? (laughs) Yeah, that's crazy. That's a genius move. Actually, this is the least crazy one. Um, If we can create a podcast this successful, imagine what Aaron Rodgers could do. And he's probably going to make a lot more money than we are. Does that mean um, so that's, Aaron? Please don't do that. I don't. I'll think do this. Do I'll do this yet. for free, brother. I thought Aaron does Aaron Rodgers Tuesdays on Pat McAfee show. Does that mean he does? He does. He does. He's, he's very, not doing. it? You think that's where he got the? He was like, "Yo, I'm liking this. I'm digging this. I'm having fun doing this." Yeah, I think, I think that's you know, once once you start doing something lie, and you like it, and you, I'm and, probably and, 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 tuning in. I would tune in. I'm gonna tune in, go. Aaron. I'm freaking pumped about your new, your new career. Let's go, baby. All right. Last Aaron Rodgers uh, potential headline that could launch between now and the tomorrow's episode launching is <gasps> Rodgers makes up his mind to come on the New Heights number one sports podcast in the country and give a LeBron James decision like moment. What? He's going to Miami. South Beach? I'm taking South my Beach. talents to South Beach? Yep. He's, co- <sighs> he's come told- on the show to announce that right Man. now. I'll tell you what. Packers fans, Packers fans, don't do what Cleveland did because there's always a chance that he might come back. Yeah. Speaking as someone who was in Cleveland when LeBron did go and make that decision, uh, yeah. I would not condone that happening on New Heights. So we can just <laughs> nix this. I'm not gonna do I'm not gonna participate in that type of decision. I still got I still got my original Braun jersey. Everybody set theirs on fire. I still got mine. I never had I, I had an Anderson Verigeau jersey and I lost you it. You did have the seventeen uh, yeah. Andy V. It was a that was a yeah. that was a sweet one too, the orange one. Yeah, I had a LeBron a, one too. I had a blue, the, I had the blue, uh, blue and red Cavs jersey that was rocking when LeBron was there the first time around. You know what I'm talking about? It was like a darker blue with like yeah. the red, like kind of like wine. trim on the sides. The wine. wine red, yeah. Thank you. The wine red, it's nice. I don't know what happened to it, but anyways, yeah, those are all of the different scenarios we think uh, might happen yeah. uh, before tomorrow. All uh, we'll electric see. scenarios. All possible. Or none of them could happen. I mean, we could be in the exact same position we're in right now. I feel like once somebody starts meeting a hostage taker's demands, you just keep asking for stuff. You keep, like, That's yeah, the problem just with keeps meeting going. the oh, demand. Oh, it's like, yeah. okay, hey, let's see what else we can ask for. So who knows? Maybe maybe, um, maybe Alan Lazard wasn't enough. We'll find out. Either way, I know this. I'm thoroughly excited to see what happens with this Aaron Rodgers situation because the dude's a baller. I mean, Absolute dude, he's one of the best of all time. Can't deny that. Whether he's in Green Bay, New York, someplace else, or retired, um, Aaron Rodgers is still Aaron Rodgers. So this is exciting stuff. 12 games. I know Jets Jake, the guy that runs our entire social platform, is I think he's just doing this over and over again on Twitter. Just refreshing. Just waiting just to see what happens. The uploads. With Aaron yeah. That's he's just good. refreshing, refreshing, refreshing. Oh, just announced. 
Um, <sighs> Aaron Rodgers is coming on the show tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Do you think he announces that he's it's going to be the Pat McAfee Aaron Rodgers show? I do. Well, no, 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 no. I think he's going to announce he's going oh. to the New York Jets on Pat McAfee. I think that's what's going what? to What? He's going to the Jets? We already did this bit. We don't oh, need to. Right. Yeah. But I like your enthusiasm. I was excited, man. And it will be electric news if it happens. It will be. As is everything that comes out of the PMS show. All righty. Uh, new segment, getting out of the house. Get your ass out the house. <laughs> this show has always stressed the importance of leaving the house to meet people and do fun things. And this week, Travis has got out the house. Um, he's headed to a little event. Uh, you might have heard of the Oscars. Ever well, heard about Fair it? has a big uh, after party at the Oscars uh, in Los Angeles. Um, yes, yes, And Trav went true. to it. How was I it? I was lucky enough to get the invite. I got the ticket, and um, me and How my two guys, you? Aaron and uh, <laughs> Andre Eanes, AA Management, um, we went up there and had a blast, man. Got to meet some uh, some folks out in Hollywood, and it was crazy. Who'd you I meet? I mean, that... Start name dropping. I, I, I gotta start. I gotta start knowing who people are in Hollywood because oh, every gosh. face was the most familiar face that you've ever seen, and you're like, "Oh my God, that's an actor. That's an actress. That's this. That's that." And I was clueless. Felt really bad. The ones that I did know, though, they started introducing me to a few people. The ones that I do remember saw D Wade up there. I'd already met him, but it was cool to uh, talk to him about some of the stuff he's getting into. What's he getting? Into? Still got. Still got to check out your wine. Yeah, he's got a he's, he's got a wine. He's that getting he's, into wine. Yeah, he's got he. Well, he's been in wine for he's the past like five five to ten years. Yeah, so I still got to check. Where's that? Where's still got to try that out. Where's it made? I would assume. Yeah, I assume is Napa. I don't think I don't think he's going overseas for it. I think he's keeping it right here in the well, states. You, you can make wine in the U.S. outside of Napa Valley. Ooh, yeah, no, Seattle's a big yeah. That whole uh, West Coast right there is big wine. Yeah, I don't know if I don't know if you're making. Great wine in the Midwest, but Virginia supposedly I think is a hotbed of wine. So is uh, Martha's. Vin- I mean, you can make wine anywhere. Yeah. So I uh, there was D Wade. Um, who else? Uh, Elizabeth Banks. She was absolutely awesome. Elizabeth she had. Uh, she, yeah. She didn't have She's a. She had a, she had a sore sore throat or some sort of a horse throat or something. So she couldn't talk much, but um, she was fun to be around. Man, she obviously doing Cocaine Bear coming out. Yeah. I'm excited to see that. That's that story is absolutely insane, <laughs> and the fact that they made uh, what is it like I mean, a comedy horror out of it? That's uh, I'm interested. I'm I think interested. it's just a thriller. I mean, it's it's yeah. Let's let's see. Okay, what can we do? Let's what's the most fear? What's the animal that everyone is most afraid of being face to face with? A grizzly, grizzly bear. bear. Okay, <laughs> how can we make this a more terrifying bear? Let's give him cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> the boy's gonna be wired. Are, yeah. You know this is based off of a like semi true story. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't know that. Okay, <laughs> so, I'm just looking forward to the sequel. Yeah, Cocaine Bear was the sequel. I'm just looking forward to the sequel, Meth Bear. Which meth is Bear? Be, oh my God, Meth Bear! You thought Cocaine Bear is intense? Just wait until <laughs> Meth Bear starts running down your fucking house. <laughs> If there's one thing that could take down a cocaine bear, it's probably a meth human. So imagine a meth bear. Indestructible. <laughs> Indestructible. Other than that, I went to the Vanity Fair, and then I went to the gold party afterwards, which is, uh, I believe, Jay-Z's party. Uh, got to meet Jay-Z. Great dude. Nice. And un- throws an unbelievable party. It was electric in there. It's not a, sh- not a shocker. Um, not not a, shocker. a shocker at all, but I did get pumped about it. Uh, Tracy Ellis Ross, absolutely hysterical. Had me dying laughing. Did you meet Larry David at uh Nice. I did meet Larry David. That was like the first person I walked in the room. Walked in the room and shook that man's hand. Curb your enthusiasm. Seinfeld. I'm trying to get into this segment and I just can't do it. I'm like really trying to be excited <laughs> about the Vanity Fair Oscar party. And I'm not gonna lie, I couldn't Dude, give less it. fucks. I like couldn't give Less fucks about the Vanity Fair Oscar party. Yeah, until yeah. you're up for an Oscar and you go to the party and you meet a whole bunch of people and you're like, wow, these people are really nice. I'll tell you really? what, it wasn't like a club. <laughs> you could have a conversation in there. It wasn't like, you know what I mean, music blaring. Like I can't I'm sure it's a blast talk to, go to anybody. I, I, I bet it is. So why don't you want to go? Because you can't wear flip-flops? You probably could <laughs> yeah. wear flip-flops. I would, I'm, I'm, I'm more, I would go. If it was convenient for me to go, if it was in New York, 
and I got invited to something like this, I would go. Nice. So the Met Gala, we're in. Got you. I lied. I'm not going. What? Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't. Um, like, saw my dog it. LeBron James. See, hey. could have met LeBron, man. Could have met LeBron with me, man. No, he's a uh, absolutely a legend. Northeast Ohio legend, Midwest legend. But yeah, it was fun to kick it with him. Saw Draymond Green up there. There were some fun faces, man. They were everywhere. Draymond. Um, again, I don't really know where to go with this. Was no, you're there, killing it. Was I'm super excited that you went. I just. Um, yeah, no. Um, if you're asking, no, I didn't invite anybody onto the show. I uh, thought it was a little too much of a kick it environment. Didn't want to bring bris- business into this thing. But uh, LeBron, if you ever want to come on the show, man, would love to have you. Would love to have you on. Yeah, I know you're pretty busy with uh, acting now, too. You're a big actor. House party. Um, yeah, I don't know. Jason's not into it, so now I'm not into it. So this, I'm sorry. Uh, just, I just, just feel like the only reason we're talking about this is because like somebody put it this is a in. Thing. Yeah, like I don't. I'm trying to get into it, but it feels. And I know that you went there, so I'm trying to let you talk about it. Yeah, no, it's and, cool. Like if you, I, uh, I had to sit through genuinely... an entire fucking Harry <laughs> Potter fucking walkthrough. Okay, you can fucking get excited about getting out of the house, Jason. If you're genuinely excited. At least you know who I'm talking about. If you're genuinely excited about Vanity Fair, I will talk about it with you. But I feel like we're talking about this not because you want to talk about it. It's a new segment, Jason, because we're going to be getting out of the house this summer. We talked about Harry Potter because I'm genuinely excited about Harry Potter. I feel like we're talking about this because somebody else wants to talk about it, which is making it difficult to talk about it. That's the only reason I'm saying this. I don't have anything to talk about, so... There's really nothing there other than I got out of the house, which is the segment. (laughs) I'm an asshole. I'm an asshole. This segment just became something fun. So thank you for being real about it, Jason. I deserve it. I deserve it. I think it's it's gold. God damn it. I think it's gold. You just made this segment something worth listening to, Jason. (laughs) You just... You just made it something worth listening to. God damn it. Trav, really happy that you were able to make it to the Vanity Shut Fair the episode. Fuck <laughs> up. <laughs> this guy's a dickhead. Oh my God. No, seriously, right. it was an honor no, to go to the Vanity Fair uh, after party. It was a blast. Even the gold party after that was even more fun. Got to see some of the coolest people in the uh, entertainment world, not just Hollywood, both sports and entertainment. And, um,. I had an absolute blast. And Jason, you should come with me next year. You'll have a different outlook on it. You'll have a different outlook on it. And he's wearing sandals. I saw Justin Bieber in there with a, he had a blanket on. That shit was sweet. I gave him, I was like, JB, you over there chilling, bro, in a blanket. Yeah, he was over there kicking it, man. That's what I'm saying, man. You get to meet some of the, some of the coolest. I mean, if there's anything we've established, I need to leave the house. I can't become a curmudgeon and just sit in my den. Mudgeon? Cur? I'm not even sure that that's a real word. Oh, man. I definitely was unsure. All right. Moving on. That's why we have this subject, this segment (laughs) right here. This is exactly why we have this segment. It's because we need to get Jason more um, understanding of what he can do outside the house and the people that he can meet. So um, if we want to keep getting good guests, we got to keep meeting people, Jason. (laughs) Got to keep this train running. (laughs) Let's You're move right. on to uh, let's move on though. What we got, and that was getting out the house with Jason Kelsey. <laughs> no, I don't fucking even know why kidding. we're talking about this shit. This doesn't make any sense. Oh, that was gosh. great, man. I loved every Sorry, bit of guys. that. All right, all right. Well, it's time to get to the interview. It's time to get to the thing that we've been uh, kind of leading and teasing uh, this entire episode. Oh yeah, got the interview with uh, head coach Nick Sirianni. What do you think about Nick Sirianni? And don't just crush me because I just crushed Vanity Fair. Please don't crush no, me. I'm not, I have nothing to crush you or Sirianni about, man. Obviously, um, yeah. great coach because of just you know how he can motivate guys, but let alone his, his X's and O's, man. You guys are flawless uh, when, the, when that thing's rolling. It's, uh, it's impressive to, to watch. Um, and he's, he's got, a, he's got a, a fun energy, man. Like the, his energy on the sidelines would you like when the when everything's rolling i have the image of him like going into the camera i think they're in like the 49ers yes. game or something where it's just like 
oh yeah and i i, think I fucking the love Giants, it man. maybe yeah maybe it was one of the playoff games though but you could tell he gets he gets into the games and he he feels a part of uh all of it and um yeah so i'm excited uh i'm excited to check this one out man see what you guys were uh were over there talking about well i think um i think you're gonna enjoy it nick is a is a fun interview He's a, he, he's a guy that wears a shirt on his sleeve, and we got into a lot of great topics, including, uh, yeah, well, I'm not going to tease it because you're going to watch it right now. With uh, Without further ado, uh, head coach Nick Sirianni. All righty, my guest right now is a three-time national champion wide receiver out of Mount Union College. He's only the third co- coach in franchise history to lead a team to the playoffs in his first year. And most recently in his second year, just his second year, led the uh, Philadelphia Eagles to only their fourth appearance in a Super Bowl. Uh, my next guest is Nick Sirianni, head coach. Welcome to the number one sports podcast in the world. Shoot, thanks for having you're, me. You're dressed very uh, fittingly with the underdog apparel, my foundation, uh, Be Philly underdog. It fits good. Thank I you don't so wear, much. I don't wear any other hats but this. You've told me that's your favorite hat. It's my and favorite I, hat. And I do appreciate that's that. That's my favorite hat. I'm, and, I'm looking for, you know what else I'm looking for is the is black on black. Black can, on black? Can we get that? We can make that happen. That's, yeah, can we do that? For, for you, Coach, yeah, anything. I appreciate that. So you are the king of wearing T-shirts. Like, and this is why I'm doing this because like, <laughs> so- Nick always wears some T-shirt theme of either one of his players. Uh, yeah, sometimes there we go, Slim Reaper, the Slim Reaper, right there. <laughs> that's all. I think that's the only thing that I have anymore. You know what I'm saying? I don't. I don't even know where my other shirts are. You, you've lost them. I've lost. I do them the all. same thing. I uh, misplace them all the time. I got about a million T-shirts of you guys. You had that Jalen one with the glasses. That that one was super sick. That's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. But this is uh, Nick's famous uh, dog mentality, dog culture. So this is. Uh, Zach's. Zach's. Yeah. Zach's guy. Yeah. Zach's guy is the owner of that. Of dog that, culture. Of dog culture. That's right. That's and so right. he had them always in, in Indy. Got right? it. And then, boom, you know, we had some in, like, we got the guy to order them. And then Zach was so, you know, was with us last year well, and then and got us some more. Zach killed this because I love this hoodie. It's a good hoodie. Cut off. Yeah, it's good. And hoodie. being an Indy, home of uh, Pat McAfee. Who's always in the tank top? I feel like I had to have the, the guns out. That's a good look. You know, I always when I wear that one, I love that one. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, but I'm not. I mean, I'm wearing my shirt underneath. <laughs> you know? I'm not. I'm not wearing just that anymore. So sure. I, but I got a couple shirts that go underneath that one. But that was that's a good one. All right. Well, um, you just finished your second year as an NFL head coach. What was different going out of your first year? Like, how did you change? What did you learn? You know what? The biggest thing I felt like that changed was like, I think when you're a coordinator or when you're a um, position coach, Mm -hmm. you can look and be like, all right, here's our, here's our, here's our, here's what we got. We got this team here. 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 Cool. All right. We can, we can, we're, we can win all four of those. You know, Mm -hmm. we can do, that's what you think. Like, I, I, I don't know why, but I felt like I thought a lot like that when I was a position coach or a coordinator. Okay. But like as a head coach, I felt like it was really important that I just, was here, right? And just locked into just that day okay. to get to the next day because I didn't want you guys thinking about that, you, you know? Think, yeah, and yeah. I wanted you just thinking about the just the next day, you know? And sometimes in coaching, you got to prepare for the next week. I get that and, mm-hmm. and all those different things. And you got to do more so of that when you're a position coach or a coordinator than you do the head coach. And so I just thought it was really important to just lock into the day. And that's where we, we talk about so much. The yeah. next, the, this day, this meeting, this one. It's just one finding out day. new ways to say, don't think too far in advance. <laughs> Many different ways, moment. yeah. How many different ways can we say that? Well, one, and you thought, I mean, how many times did we say that? This one day? of my favorite ways you've ever said it was the infamous Roots uh, quote, <laughs> uh, where you compared the Eagles organization to a plant just growing its roots, and where it's going to keep growing these things, getting better every single day. When you look back, you gave that speech. I think when we were two and five, we're twenty-one and seven how about that? since that speech, which was crushed in philadelphia i mean like most things you know what happen. i said i said in philadelphia it was a flower and it, and i did i remember i when i said it to you i said plant yeah and then when for whatever reason i'm like i'm sitting there interviewing and i'm like yeah, yeah it was a flower. well you wanted it to become a flower like a flower is a beautiful <laughs> finished product right and, and so i said flower to them and it was like, no it's a flower fans are funny <laughs> some of the outfits like the uh, flowers there i mean philadelphia is very creative but um is it when you look back, like how real did that metaphor end up becoming, though? You know, we, we grew all through the first year. We ended up making the playoffs after a bad start in mm-hmm. two and five. You guys somehow kept that thing going 
morphed it into what it needed to be, and we ended the year really strong, and then had the the year that we had this year. Like it ended up being an unbelievable metaphor yeah. looking back. And it and it all that was was a metaphor because we had already put the work in. It's not like it's not like I we said that right, and yeah. everyone was like, yeah, yeah. It, it was just what we were doing. Yeah, I was just basically painting the picture. You know, sometimes they ask me like too, like how'd you get all these guys to think think about your message and be like. Yeah, that's a good message. And and first of all, I, I I always say you know it's our players. Like our we have unbelievable leaders and captains and and yeah. people on this team. But also, I'm not saying crazy things. I'm saying hey, if you connect, we're going to be better. If yeah. you compete, we're going to be better. Like oh yeah, if we're if you hold each other accountable, we're going to be better. Now we live those things every day. Yeah, we practice those. But we all know though those are common denominators of a good team. Well, it's the same thing. We were doing all those things, mm-hmm. right? We were building foundation, and everybody wants the foundation. Everyone wants it to pop as as soon as it, it can, and all of, all of us want to do that. But yeah, sometimes the roots need to grow, and it or the foundation of the building needs to grow, or however you want to compare it mm-hmm. for everything to to stay sturdy and stay rock solid as you continue to grow higher yeah and finding ways to, to to keep guys doing that yeah like you said like finding new ways like one of the things that is very underrated or not even known i guess is i think your team meetings are unbelievable oh, the more we get accomplished in those meetings is more than i probably have with, i think any other head coach no I offense to it. doug chip or andy reed but um that. the 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 team meetings are one, you, you stay true to the messaging, right? But you find new ways that guys lock in to listen to it. Um, but then also the, the coaching that happens in the team meetings, the film of good and bad, not in like a call out way mm-hmm. and just like, hey, we're going to show when we do things right so that everybody knows, hey, this is what we want you to do. Right. Uh, we're going to show when things don't go bad so that guys can learn from that instead of just the guy that made the mistake. And then also just the uh, the, the coaching of situational football. Um, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. I have a feeling if you just turn the TV off and on, it'll just pop back on. Every for... time something's fucked up, I can't fix shit. Dude, we, we joke oh. about this. Oh. <laughs> Everything technical, our, the running joke with the uh, the whole podcast is turn it off, turn, turn it on. on. <laughs> unplug it off, unplug it and plug it back in. We'll go through all these technical workshops and it all ultimately comes down to just turn it off and turn it on. <laughs> I, have a, I, have a, I have a great story. Okay. All right. So I'm like that all the time. And, there, and every joke is always like, did you try turning it on? Did you, is it plugged in? <laughs> They're like, yeah, I go and every time I go, I'm out. Yeah. I don't know anything else. Yeah. Uh, and so our fireplace has been broken for, for six months. Mm-hmm. I love going home when it's cold out, turning the fireplace on, sitting in the couch, letting the heat, just like, I love that. Yeah. For six months, I've been saying, like, hey, can you, my dad was here. I'm like, can you call the guy? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and my wife, can you, can you call the guy? No one's done it. Mm-hmm. No one's done it. Like, what are you doing? I'm, I'm coaching. Yeah, I'm busy right now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we have this guy coming in to do our patio. He don't know. I don't think he knows anything about fireplaces, but I'm like, hey, let's give it a shot. Yeah. He jaws up the patio how we want. I'm like, hey, bro, do you know anything about fireplaces? He's like, yeah, let me look at it. He's looking and he goes, hey, when's the last time you changed these batteries for the remote? I'm like, you, if it's the if it's the <laughs> fucking <laughs> batteries. So we come through here. He's he he's looking at it. He goes, change the batteries. Let's see what happens. Mm-hmm. Put four new AA batteries in. Instant. Instant. Instant fire. I was so mad. Like, cause that's what that's my thing. That's how I fix it. Why do I feel like this is going to be a speech to the team in the future? <laughs> so all of the speeches end up being real life scenarios. It's like, listen, you know, things are going wrong. You don't know why you're having a bad game. Just turn it off, turn it on. <laughs> Replace the batteries. We're on to the next play. <laughs> I'm definitely doing it. I'm definitely doing it. It's a hundred percent. It's just another way to say dog mentality. You're a hundred percent right. Oh my gosh. Uh, you more than any coach I've ever been with are obsessed with situational football. Has it, have you always been obsessed with it? Is um is that the job of the head coach or is that yeah, I guess. I'll let yeah, you. I think it's the job of the head coach to, to present it, and then everybody else to you know to echo it and they get those coaching points. One thing I always say to the guys is going into that Saturday situational Saturday walkthrough, right? Yeah, is you know we have the meeting on Saturday and then walkthrough. Um, I always say, hey, make sure co- position coaches, coordinators, echo the coaching points. Get one more opportunity to say down uh no mas means this you yeah. know whatever just just echo all those things mm-hmm. and so uh but where i really where i became obsessed with it was in kansas city was was they had a we had a board like in training camp like here's all the situations we need to get covered and like i guess when you hear like what that it's important to bill parcells because todd haley worked with bill parcells yeah. you kind of think to yourself like oh shoot you know that bill parcells was obsessed with this cool here we go what did he do boom, 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 boom. Right. 
because Belichick is renowned for being such, and he was also a yeah. Of sales and maybe maybe that's where it, maybe that's where it all started too. Uh huh. So that's that's where the the start of it came, and then I was kind of like, then we went to to San Diego after that, and and we were kind and, and Coach McCoy was was really big into that too, and I think Frank and I had a big part of, you know, thinking through all the situations, and it's just kind of grown every place I've been. Yeah, how many situations? Is there even a number? I feel like each week you guys bring up a new situation that you finally that you've learned by yeah. watching another team, and and that's the beauty of growing, right? Because like, there is there's always something new that comes up that you're like. Shoot, we didn't practice that. Right. We haven't talked about that. Yeah. Great. Let's talk about it. We we just got better. Like mm-hmm. there's a go, there's a cool feeling in that too of watching somebody, you know, do something and be like, wow, they did that really well, or oh, they really messed that up. Right. And you say, we got to coach that. We got to do that. Now, yeah. there's a fine line too of being like, well, of knowing what's important because it can the list can go like this and like just like plays can go like this. Well, what's yeah. important that we need to harness in on. I mean, how many times have we run heave ho? Yeah, not often. We've done well. We've we've walked through it every we've single walked. week. <laughs> Frank Reich used to say to me all the time, he's like, nobody, like every sat- situational Saturday, because we did the same thing, and he goes, nobody, and I mean nobody, practices heave ho more than you scripted. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, and that was kind of became a joke. But then I'm like, well, shoot, if it comes up, it came up for the Chiefs in the Super Bowl when they played the Niners. They ran heave ho. Yeah, you know, they yeah. ran heave ho in that game, and so like. Shoot, you know, it, it, who knows? Because who knows when they come up? That's the beauty of it. Like, I, you have to be, like, so in tune to the situation because you you never know when it's going to come up. Well, and I like that you guys – I feel like a lot of coaching staffs talk about that amongst themselves. What I really like about you is that you talk about it in the team meeting. Mm-hmm. So, like, all the players end up becoming aware. Not You're not aware in every situation, but maybe your buddy next to you is there is, hey, this is, the, this, is this situation. This mm-hmm. is what play we're running right here. Or, like – you know, I'm watching the Super Bowl and, you know, right after they got that, uh, the penalty, go to the first down, I'm like, we got to be in LA right now. We got to let them score if we yeah. want any chance to win this. And yeah. sure enough, we pop it. We execute it really well, but Jared McKinnon is just a little bit, he's, he's, Jets too smart. He's, that was a really smart play. <laughs> it was a him. very unselfish play. And, and obviously very smart, but from their coaches, because you know, they to get that in. Yeah. yeah. No moss. And so, I, you know what? I felt like, shoot, we, man, what if we were to practice that a little bit more? What mm-hmm. if we would have done, like, that's where, you know, how we are. We just, I'm always like, this is what I could have done better. What if we would have done a little bit better to get the guys a little closer? Like, we're going to tackle. We talked about it. Yeah. Did we walk through it? Like, yeah. that's where I'm beating myself up. You know, yeah. like, maybe we should have put – that's in Situational Saturday I next thought week. that they did a good job. They did a good job. Yeah, but they you could just, job. like, maybe yeah. be a little bit more, like, just, like <laughs> dive and then miss his leg on purpose. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Like, yeah. that's how my son does tackling and real tackling drills. You don't really want to get hit yet. Right. And so he'll come up and he'll take this angle on these angle tackling drills. I'm like, he's he not even close. And, and he'll sweep yeah. the back part of his yeah. leg. Just and take I'm a like, terrible angle, but <laughs> run full speed and just get the guy thinking about that so maybe he forgets that he's supposed to go I'm going to have Jacob Sirani come in and demonstrate <laughs> what to do. <laughs> this is... <laughs> and demonstrate what to do. Just put on, just put on tape of Pee Wee football and be like, this is how we want you to do Ole. Awful angle. Terrible angle. Like, every time I go to his practice, I'm telling you, I'm watching it and I'm like, yeah. you can just see right from me. I'm like, hey, this ain't even going to be close. But he ain't going to get hit and that's what his goal is right now. So he's actually accomplishing the goal he wants to that accomplish. That he really secretly wants. All right, let's get back to growing. So one of my favorite things after outside of the Roots speech, because I actually really like that, was... After your first press conference, you get killed by the city of Philadelphia. Angelo Gattaldi, everybody. I like how and, we throw Angelo. Yeah, yeah. Well, Angel. you threw Angelo out there <laughs> talking crap about Gannon. So I'm like, I'll throw Angelo. But he just retired, so he can't talk shit to me anyways. And I think a lot of people would do that. And, and it, you you could respond. There could be multiple responses to that. Whether you like, okay, now I don't want to do press conferences anymore. Or like, fuck all these guys. No, I'm sorry, family show. All right. Um, <laughs> So fuck is off. We can't say fuck. You can. You can. Right. We do it all the time, but we, try to, bleep we try to not to because there are kids that watch it. But you use it as a way for the team to notice that you're being accountable to getting better. You talked about, in one of my favorite team meetings, you do your second press conference and you practice and prepare even harder to make sure that you are better in your second press conference. And I think that that's an unbelievable message for a team to hear that like, hey, the head coach is trying to get better. Yeah. And he, it's a very concrete example of trying to get improvement. And I think that that leads itself to players then being easy to be like, okay, if, uh, if he's accountable and, and and being real with himself to know where he needs to get better at, you know, I'm going to do the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's, that's part of leadership, right? You yeah. Know, and that's, and that's why, you know, if I want the players on our team and the coaches on our team to, 
to hold each other accountable. You got, I got to hold myself accountable. And then think about why we have a good team. Like, look at the leaders we have. And I'm saying you and and Fletch and BG and Lane and Jalen and and Slay. And I'm just naming the captains and Jake. Right. Yeah. And, and you guys do that every day and mm. it, tr- and it, and it trickles to the rest of the team. It becomes a culture. It becomes a culture. Yeah. It's what you live every day. Right. Mm. And so I, I think too many times I feel, I feel like we've all probably had coaches that too many times you felt like, I don't want to say it, it's, it's like, I mean, I don't want them to think I'm wrong and I'm not going to say I'm wrong up there, I, but they're, we're all wrong. Yeah. We all make mistakes in that. And I think that's important that, that we that we talk about them right it's because yeah. all that matters is as we get better and the other part of that message was hey the second interview i went in there and i crushed Nailed it i was it. awesome yeah. and i turned the radio on to listen to what they said and i still, still were got crushing crushed. me yeah. i mean if, if so, philadelphia it, it's gonna <laughs> you do have to tune it out a little bit until you you know, even when you're doing really well yeah. you still got to tune it out you still because then they're gonna love you and it's like listen i gotta realize i'm not what everyone thinks I am. Remember how many times you said that this training camp? Yeah. Like you, how many times did you say like, "Hey, listen, I love the players that we're acquiring and that we have, and look at practice; it's going unbelievable. We're b- working our ass off. Yeah. Every, everything's coming together the way we need it to." But mm-hmm. don't be, don't make it for one second that the names I, you said this. I said, you said this ten times in training camp that the I, names I on this paper. To start listening to that. Don't, yeah. it, it, keep working, head down, work, 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 and yeah. and like. Like that's the same message. Let's get back to your first year. What do so we ask players this a lot who are like, what was your welcome to the NFL moment? Do you have like a welcome to head coaching moment? Was there a moment in your first year that you uh, were like, man, being a head coach is either not what I expected or like very aware of like everything. Like, was it the, was it the press conference? Was it the, the, the roots? Like that everything you said is going to be overanalyzed. Sure. Was it a moment in a game? Yeah, I think, I think the, that opening press conference was, <laughs> was, was it like, was because shock, just yeah. like everybody's going to, man, they're to like really reading into this. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I do? I tell this story a lot. I All tell right. this story a lot. So we played the Patriots. I don't, I think it was the first game that we had in, in uh, pre-season. preseason. Yeah. Maybe it was second because we practiced against them. We definitely practiced. So, and it wasn't the first week. So it was the second week. All right. We played the Patriots and everybody's talking and like, hey, like, listen, you get the job and people say, rebuild, rebuild, rebuild. And like the first thing you think, like, no no way, that's not what we, no, that's not, no coach, no player ever in the history of the game says, hey, this is going to be a rebuild season. We're just going to, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so like, that was the message almost that you were getting from outside. Right. From the outside. Like, hey, this is going to be a rebuild. This is going to be a re- whatever. And I, that never went into play. Right. We worked just as hard that training camp as we if we worked the last training camp yeah. and everything like this. And but, you go out every game expecting to win and have success. Like, There's no game where you're like, well, I guess, you know, words of rebuild year. We're just <laughs> let's see what who cares if we win. Yeah, that's no. not in any of our, our DNA. Right. Yeah. And so we we play that game. We got we got smoked. Yeah. We got smoked, and, and it's a preseason game. I get it. Like it, I don't. You, same I don't thing even, happened this year with the Dolphins. The, sa- the same thing happened yeah. this year with the Dolphins. I don't think you guys didn't play. Remember, because Jalen. Well, in all the games that we practiced with those, teams, yeah, we didn't play. The starters don't play very much. Yeah, that's right. Like remember, we I think you guys were going to play, but then we Jaylen, practiced really well against them. Yeah, Jalen had something. He got something. We did practice well, and Jalen got like something. I don't remember what it was, and we're like, no one's playing because you're right. Remember yeah. that? Yep. I, so we we get. We get shellacked. Yeah. Right. And they're booing us at halftime. Yeah. I'm like, what the, f- what yeah. is going on? Oh, yeah. So I get in the car with my wife. And uh, this is a, I, I remember you heard this. this? I love this. Please car, tell it. Yeah. I get in the car with her and she, and I go, can you, this freaking preseason. And we just had a really good practice, two practices against the Patriots mm-hmm. who are a really good, well coached team, good, you know, good players, everything. And they were booing us. And she's like, well, what'd you give them to cheer about? <laughs> And I'm, time quote by Brett Sirianni. <laughs> Brett Sirianni. Yeah. <laughs> and I loved it. And I just thought to myself, yeah, like we have people that will hold you to a standard. I love yeah. that. We have uh, that will hold you to a standard in this city. Yeah. And we got to live up to it. Yeah. Not maybe this is why you've assimilated so well to Philadelphia <laughs> because your own wife, Brett, is giving you the exact same treatment at home. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I go through it 24 <laughs> seven. Uh, but that, that game against the Dolphins this year, too. Right. And, mm-hmm. and, uh, like they like you never want to go out and put a bad product on the field right Right. by any account people are playing to get paying to see you play right but even more than that you want to continue to be playing well and improving and just to so there was go as far as you can right remember they didn't practice because they all had food poisoning or something like that remember that i forgot about that practice yeah so they played all then all their starters played fresh (laughs) (laughs) i didn't even think about that like yeah okay i'm watching things happen like in that game yeah 
And Tyreek Hill runs right by our secondary the first play of the game. And we're all on the headsets going, they're going to throw vertical to him right there. Back up, back up, back up, back up. So that's where it started. Like, See it happening before it happens. And then, then we had that 6-1 play. Remember, we got the 6-1 on, and we ran yeah. and we ran Storm. And then We and, expected to just get generic defenses and in this preseason game and didn't have anything in for this. Oh, I was yeah. so mad. And so I started like, Oh, I was ripping the guys on the headset, yeah, like and just like unbearably. And mm-hmm. and I remember Shane or somebody, what somebody that can calm me down was like, "Hey, listen, we got we had our butts kicked against the the the, the Patriots too last year." Yeah. Like, like I'm like, no, this is not this is unacceptable. Yeah. So same same kind of thing. I do think some of that stuff's good though. It's it, it's good to uh, get your butt kicked in a meaningless preseason game yeah. and bring you back down to earth and be like, "Hey, we got a lot of we got a lot to fix." Yeah, from all not just players like the whole building everybody it's good yeah did you get any advice from other coaches or anybody that ended up being like the best advice something that ended up being true like like man you know what that that guy told me that that ended up being 100 percent accurate yeah you know i you get you get a lot of advice from a lot of different people like Mm -hmm. and i have my main mentors in life and and this and that but you know i remember chris ballard saying to me he said something to me like before you know because obviously he was the general manager of the colts and then I was leaving. He goes, "Hey, you're gonna make mistakes. You're going to own them, and move on." Yeah. And I remember in my first week or so, like, forget the press conference, but it was like hiring things too. And I'm like, I'm trying to get everything right, and this and that. I'm like, "Ooh, I really messed that up right there." Okay. And, and it wasn't with. It was just a, a something I messed up with. I, I can't even remember what it was, but I remember waking up in the middle of the night, like just turning. I'm like, "Oh, that was a bad mistake." I couldn't go back to sleep. I was just on my mind, like, bad mistake. It's crazy because I heard Chris's voice say. You're gonna make mistakes. Yeah, own it and move on. I owned it and I moved on, and that's I was awesome. able to be able to get get through that. And that's accountability, and that's dog mentality. Really, when you say when you think about it, right? You own it, mm-hmm. right? Accountability, and you get better from it. Accountability, and then you move on. Dog mentality. So. Yeah. All right. Well, you talked about mentors. I know you've talked about Frank a lot. Both of us have been fortunate to work with Frank. Um, had an emotional deal with. <laughs> after the game against Indy this year, do you want to describe your relationship with Frank or like what? Yeah, shoot. He's like he's like my big brother. You know, mm-hmm. I got two, two two older brothers, and then I, Frank's like my big brother because, mm-hmm. and I don't ever tell, say he's like 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 my dad because, and then Frank, I don't want Frank to feel old, right? So I, I'm always <laughs> more, like, like more out of respect for Frank, <laughs> more out of respect for Frank, and so I'm always like he's like my he's like my big brother, and uh, he he just prepared me for everything, right? Yeah. As a head coach, as a coordinator, because he was a coordinator when I was the quarterback coach, right? Mm-hmm. He was a quarterback coach when I was the quality control in, in San Diego. So he was just preparing me, and he, and he always took a liking to me and was preparing me for all the next steps, yeah. right? And and again, what's a great preparation is you lead by example, right? And then yeah. that's what he always did. And and just other things, life in general, things, family, kid, like this guy's an all-American all guy that has good knowledge on everything. So I just always felt like him um, as like a big brother that leads by example, always pulled me aside to help me prepare for for my next journeys. And so you're always you're always grateful for that and a good and good friend of mine. Yeah, you talked about being a coordinator, right? Like, what is the biggest shift going from being a coordinator to like a head coach? Like, I think the all the things that are important to being a good offensive coordinator mm-hmm. are equally as important when you're a, when you're a, a head coach. Yeah, you're just doing it with the whole team now, right? Mm-hmm. Like with me. Right, you 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 got the job because you were you were deemed as good at being an offensive coach and the things that you do. So you don't want to lose that when you become a head coach, right? Yeah. You want to continue to to do the things that got you the job and provide your expertise on that. So you know, continuing to do the offensive stuff, and then I thought what was really important was to be able to say, hey, all right, I have this this wealth of knowledge on offensive football. I need to share this with the defensive guys. Yeah. I didn't do that as a coordinator. Now I talked with the guys like, hey, what would be a card against this? But I, you know, every Tuesday I'm in a meeting with Gannon like, all right, well, what are they doing? Yeah, now it's more structured. Now it's, it's, yeah, right. And so like, all right, well, you guys got to determine if this is the right thing to do here. Um, but I tell you what gives this play problems is this. Yeah. And and that's their main play. I'll tell you what gives this receiver problems and that is this and, and figure it out how the pieces fit. Like so like that. And then also with the defensive guys. But it's just now connecting with the entire team, because if you're taking your role as an offensive coordinator of just more than the guys that are that's calling the plays and and correcting the film and and doing that and you're taking it as I'm the mini head coach of the offense right. then you're preparing yourself to be 
the head coach of an entire team. But I think it's yeah. that's exactly what it is. Now you're in charge of the entire team. I'm going to take what I was doing with the offense now more to the whole team. More to the whole team, exactly. Yeah, how, how does hiring an offensive coordinator, a defensive coordinator go? Because does that help having actually done the position and when you're interviewing these guys? Like, for sure, yeah, for sure. I mean, you know. I guess you just hired – Two yeah, new ones. Just two new ones. <laughs> I just talked to Shane, uh, and and uh, we were talking through it. And he was talking about uh, a, a, somebody he was going to hire, and this and that. And he was going back and forth, like, and, and and I just reassured him, and not that he needs my reassurance and or anything like that, but I just reassured him, like, Shane, you know, me and you have evaluated coaches a thousand times more than we've evaluated players. What do you mean by that? Hmm. And he didn't say that. I'm saying what I'm saying it for here. Like, yeah, well. We're always sitting there while we're watching players or while we're sitting there game planning or while we're doing this. We're always sitting there and hearing other coaches talk. And yeah. we know that was a stupid idea or we know that was a great idea or that was a bad coaching part. Or that was a good. Co we evaluate coaches, whether we know it or not, more so than we even evaluate players, because that's what we do. Like we're in there with that's We spend more time with you communicating with the most. We spend yeah. more time with them than our wives. Right. And he's like, wow, the gut. I'm like, yeah, go with it. You know, yeah, you know, and like it's the same thing here. Like you know, I, I think it's really important when you're when you're hiring guys is to is to make sure you have different people in the room that give you different expertise, right? Yeah. Um, you know, here's who's in this room. Uh, you know, I, I want the I want offensive guys here that you know, like Jamal sat in and all the defensive coordinator interviews, and so did Kevin, and so did Brian. Yeah. Right. And then there were some defensive coaches that had some expertise in all three levels that sat in, in there as well. And then you and then you talk and you and you think about the questions you're going to ask, and you have a list of them. And then at the end, you you. You know, you eval, eval it, right? What do yeah. you think here on fundamentals? Boom. What do you think here on the run game scheme? Boom. What do you think here on the situations? Boom. And all the things that you just did with that player, you, you you go through and you give them just like we do with a player. Plus, okay, minus for the day. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, you try to cast a wide net and listen to a lot of different guys talk. Like, I really looked at that as an opportunity to say, we had a great opportunity to get better at football. Like, we don't – we don't go to the national coaches convention anymore, right? Yeah. We, don't, we don't go to the. You probably probably should go to Glacier Clinics and stuff like that, and just sit in there. Why not, right? You're gonna learn something. You're gonna it. learn something. Well, we is just, it worth the time commitment though? To, that's the thing. Well, right? if there's one at the Philadelphia Hotel, we probably you know, or whatever. What's the, should we start a coaching clinic just to get good minds come to Philadelphia and we can steal their let's see, if we, <laughs> let's see if we can get the Cowboys to come, yeah. the Giants to come. This is a really big deal, guys. You should definitely <laughs> you come. Should definitely come. A lot of people are gonna be there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but yeah, we got to sit in the you know however long the interview lasts with the amount of guys that we did, and mm -hmm. just sit there and learn ball and and figure out not, only, not well you're doing two things you're figuring out who you actually think the best possible candidate is, right. and then you're also learning ball and, and you're getting better yourself. Yeah, what are the qualities for an offensive coordinator or defense? Like what are you, like if you were to draw up the perfect coordinator, what would be the ideal traits? Yeah, you know, w w that's a good question yeah. because and, and Shane and I do this a lot because Gus Bradley taught us this. And and so okay. Gu Gus Bradley would come and, he'd be, and he comes up to us and he goes, hey, explain to me what you're what the best coach. What does a great coach look like to you? Okay. And you sit there for a second and you start to talk and you're like, OK, I got it. And you start to tell him. All right. Okay. It's this, it's this, it's this, it's this, it's this. And he looks at you and he goes, you just explained yourself. to me." <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, it's like, and you and you think to yourself, you're like, I think I just yeah, did. Yeah, I think I just That's did. That's what makes you a great coach. <laughs> <laughs> and like, because you think about the things that you do and you're like, yeah, I think that's good. And and, and you know your warts too. You don't say those, mm -hmm. but you say the things that you think are good about yourself. But the important thing is why I even brought that up is the important thing is it's like, you can't have... 20 of me's running around. You can't have 20 of stouts running around. Right. You can't have 20 of whatever, the, whoever it is. Yeah, 20 stouts would be a very interesting <laughs> offensive install media. It would be a great install media. Yeah, yeah. But like, very detailed. It would be very it would be detailed. long. Would, <laughs> <laughs> he's the best. And so, like, it's important that you have, you know, different styles too. Yeah. Because that leads to different ideas. That leads to, to everybody. And so, I don't know if there's a perfect you know, one or, or, but what the qualities have to be is you have to be an expert on offense, right? Or sure. defense. Yeah. And the detail has to be so, so high, right? We, how many times did we say that? Okay, here we go. How do we get a little bit better each day? 
high meat, high attention, attention to detail, to detail. and meaning. Started by coaches going to players. Full speed of the snap and walk through. High, high intensity of practice, right? And, say, yeah. and so the detail has to be so, so high because you can have all these different styles of coaches, right? Yeah. But what makes a good coach is detail. So that's the first thing. Being able to put the players in proper positions to make plays. What are you going to do against this? What yeah. are you going to do if you get a high tendency of this? What are you going to do if you get a high tendency of this, right? And then ultimately is can you teach players fundamentals, Yeah. right? Because that's our job is like to give you the guys the tools to teach you the things like like we're, you're here, right? And and if you play with good fundamentals, you'll get here. It's not going to be like right, but it's but that matters in the NFL. Huge. That matter. All these things matter in the NFL. Well, it kind of it matters more in the NFL too because I feel like so much of the discussion ends up being like not even just between coaches, but between coaches and players, like high level, like structure oriented, like how can we gain advantage from emotion, a formation uh, against this coverage, against this blitz? How can we design that? And then all of a sudden you lose track also because we don't really practice that much too, but yeah. you lose track of the little fundamentals that allow you to do all these things and execute them at high levels, right? There's no doubt. Yeah. It, it becomes too scheme oriented. Yeah. And not the player yeah. and how he plays. How can we make the player play at his optimal right. level? And part of that is the right angle. For sure. And, and every, yeah. you know, but like yeah. but the next step, it's it's a both and, yeah. right? It's a, you it's, can you can be in great angles, but if the if the fundamentals aren't right when you're attacking that you can be as wide open as possible. Right. If you, if you haven't uh, got on the judge machine enough, or uh, you know whatever, I'm, I'm talking receivers like I know anything about receivers, <laughs> but um, you know offensive Stay line, right. you can drop Just. the best run play if you're not approaching with the right fit, uh, the right angle, the right the right hat placement. It can ruin the whole play. I remember, you guys came to me and said, "Hey, that Wednesday, let's let's do individual." Let's do individual there just to continue to, to fine tune the details. Yeah. And that's what we did. You know, instead of walkthrough Wednesday mm -hmm. late in the season, we ended up going to individual then walkthrough. Yeah. Right. Remember that? Because you guys know, you guys know how important that the fundamental is. So, yeah. or, or conversely, it could be a bad, a terrible situation, but because a guy does some like unbelievable thing out there, makes a play, uh, which started with good fundamentals. Right. Bails us out. 100%. 100%. Yeah. I'm curious about this because my dad, didn't coach high school football, but he's the first coach I ever had. He's my little league baseball coach. And I think a lot of how I interact on a field and play sports and everything was dictated because of my dad and my brother. Hmm. Your brother's a coach, your dad's a high school football coach. I see them around the building all the time. So obviously you guys are always are communicating. You've hmm. said that you compete against each other. What have you taken from them? Like, sure. how was it growing up in a household that was like so, into sports, football, coaching, and is is that a big reason why you coach right now? Shoot, hey, we need twenty minutes. <laughs> uh, man, I, I have so many stories of of just of just that. Like sports is it is it's faith family football for us, and it's like that's and and really you could say football, but if we were in basketball season, it was basketball. Bas yeah, if it right. was basketball. If it was whatever. Yeah. Um, but like there was just so much. Man, my dad used to say to us, like, if you're gonna play for for me and this and that, you gotta you gotta be really good because I don't want anyone to think I'm playing you just because you're my son. <laughs> right. And so like we worked hard at it, and and shoot, I, we lived about a mile and a half from the school, and, and he was a track coach, right? He was a football coach for a little bit, got and cancer, track. he got cancer, and then he just helped out on the side. He wasn't the head track coach okay. anymore, um, or head football coach, but he was the head track coach for 46 years. And Holy like, cow. I got, I mean, I have so many stories that, that flow through my head, like. You know, it'd be like I'd have a hard workout in track, right, or or mm -hmm. whatever, and I'd be like, all right, I'm getting in the car with my dad and going home. He's like, nah, yeah, you run, that's your cool down. I'm like, yeah, Son of a bitch. you know, it was like all those. He did the scorebook at basketball games, like he would sit there and do the scorebook, like hey, mm -hmm. uh, Sirianni two points, Miller three points, whatever. And he would sit there, and I'd have those. I I, you know, I knew my coach was watching. I had a great high school basketball coach and Scott mm -hmm. Cooper, but then I had my dad's eyes like looking at me, like don't you mess this up, and yelling me at the, over there too, like so. There yeah. was a lot of accountability, sure. <laughs> that's for sure. And then what makes it really cool now is that we can bounce ideas off each other. My, my brother, Mike, who's the head football coach at Washington and Jefferson College, like we gave him a two-point play maybe two years ago Okay. of like, hey, here's a play that we're running in the tight red zone. This is pretty good. Do you like it? Yeah, I really like that. I mean, you have all the tape. Boom, boom, here you go. He called me, I want to say this year at one point, he's like, hey, they're starting to stop it. But we were 17 and 19 on that two point, on that tight red zone play. I'm like, 
That's that, a good play right there. When it's your older brother. Is that 92%? That's got to be close. <laughs> it's like our sneak percentage. Uh, when it's your older brother and you can help him with something like that, that, yeah. that that's pretty cool. And then where do I get that big brother feeling of why did I get in the stands? Why did I yell at Indianapolis Colts fans after we, or, or Philly fans, whatever. I was yelling like or celebrating with Philly fans at the end of the indie game because when you mess with uh, one of my brothers, I get pissed, yeah, right? Like, right. you know, yeah. right? I remember like there was- it's personal. I can't tell you how many times, like if if the Southwestern Trojans lost and someone said to me it's something at school, like I remember I got, I told you guys this story. Remember I got yeah. into a fight because I was sticking up for my brother and the kid yeah. kicked, the, kicked the shit out of me, right? He was an older <laughs> kid and he said something about my brother. I'm like, saying that I'm in the middle of the bus seat getting pounded. Doesn't um, matter, you stood up for him. He stood up for yeah. him, right? And so, but that, that's what's cool. Like to be able to, and I went in a lot of different different directions there but like being able to talk football with them still and what you guys and what they think here what they mm-hmm. think there all the memories growing up and the accountability growing up and knowing what sports had done for us in our lives and, and how important it was and how sacred it was and then um just having each other's back at all times like and so those are the yeah. the things that i remember the most I, I could tell stories forever about you know all sorts of things like that because you know, but just sports was so intertwined in who we were and, and, and what we did, uh, you know, growing up. Yeah, we did the same. We played any sport possible. We weren't football players. We didn't even start playing football till middle school. And you learn from all these, like, it's fast. It's interesting to me that your dad was also the track coach because you have football, which is an insane, like the, the pinnacle of team sports mm-hmm. and like cooperation. And then you have track, which is like, a. Hey, Depending on the event, it's you out there yeah. and you're doing this on your own and it's overly mechanical. You talk about like attention to detail. There's like no all, it's all detail. It's yeah. all hitting yeah. the precise things. I feel no, like no doubt. And he, and we were triple jumpers. Right. And so oh there, gosh. there's all like, I'm like, watch that happen. I don't even know if I could coordinate myself <laughs> to do. It's all technique. Yeah. It's all technique. You can't, I, I've nerd out of triple jump, but you I can't, you can't have bad step phase. And mm-hmm. like, and so we were good at technique because that was like, so we're fundamentals. Where does that come from? My dad, right? Like right. stuff like that. But what's funny about that is, is yes, track is this individual sport mm-hmm. and football is this team sport. But my dad, gravitated toward football always right and so like i remember him like being there like okay if this guy jumps this and th- their guy is going to do this he could figure out the score sure. of what the track's going to be if everybody did their their hit their, their job hit, 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 hit their, their marks yeah. yeah and so i remember one day i had food poisoning going into a track meet my senior year mm-hmm. I, I ate something at lunch in the cafeteria yeah and i'm just i, I can't stop throwing up i'm ugh, ugh. and then my dad came up to me he goes hey uh, you got you're in four events I'm like dad I, I can't i'm throwing up every two seconds he goes i know but what okay listen i just need you to place at least third in two of them and i need you to win the triple jump this is so i'm like uh, this guy <laughs> and so like i'm throw, i'm running down the runway because he had figured out that if we do that because i think i would have won a couple of them and and maybe got second a couple of them but he figured out if, if i just got third like he's doing the team part he's helping all the individuals but he's doing the team part in his mind yeah and so i remember running. i just need you to do this. i just need you to do this i would run down the runway I would do whatever jump I did. I did high jump, triple jump, long jump, and high hurdles. Yeah. Right. I would run down the runway, and I'm just speaking of long jump and triple jump. I'd land in the pit. I'd throw up. Oh my god! And then gosh. I'd come back. And in it, the pit? I get out of the okay, pit. Okay. I get right. out of the That's pit. Funny. I mean, it wasn't land. Boom. It was land. <laughs> boom. Walk. Like the moment you, your feet hit, you go. Uh. <laughs> it was like it was a nightmare day, but yeah. like he had figured. But he knew. Did you get, did you get it done? We. I think we won. I mean, shoot, we won for the steal. Yeah, they won. <laughs> but like he was figuring out how we could win as a team because and so what my point is like it, it is always about like when my family it was always about team 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 yeah. team 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 even in individual even things, in you find individual a way to things. correlate it back to the collective yeah group. all right yeah God, that's so similar. I got a combine story. I don't know if we have time to share it, but same thing. We got time. I, I had appendicitis. Oh, fuck you, Bob. <laughs> I, had a, I had appendicitis at the combine. I've never run track, but the combine is essentially a track meet, yeah. right? Like yeah. you have some drills you in there. You had appendicitis stuff. at the at I the thought combine? I had the stomach oh, yeah. bug. I literally was throwing up. I would go in the, I don't even know if they still do this, but uh, the informal interviews, because yeah. I wasn't good enough to have a lot of formal ones. So that was my time to like talk to these guys. And I would go from meetings to the bathroom, throw up or out the other end. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell is going on? I think I got like stomach flu. And then randomly on the day I, I was gonna run, I felt a little bit better. Went out there and that was the same thing. Like 
the 20 yard shuttle, like I have a really good time. And people are like, man, you're insanely athletic. I'm like, that, that's like, that drill is all about, I'm gonna do it precisely yeah. with the technique and the steps necessary. And if I do that, I'm gonna run a faster time than if I actually try to run as fast as I can. So I'm doing all that. And then a week, and I, a little bit less than a week later, I find out, I get sick again, go to the emergency room, like, hey, you, oh, got, you got appendicitis, you gotta get your appendix taken out. So that, that was my combine story. Do you think any of your times weren't as good as what you thought they should be with that? Well, Pro no, I don't no. think that my, the sickness affected. And, and if anything, I was 280. So you were back. I was like 295 all working out. And then I weighed down like, man, I'm like, this might make me run faster. I'm pretty light right now. Can you imagine if that right there, mm -hmm. the, the appendicitis right there affected your draft status either way? Well, I think it did. Up or down? It, it went up. down bad. It went down. Okay. Because I was 280. Well, I, I wanted to weigh 295. I was, I was the, I think I'm the, uh, the lightest or second lightest like center ever to weigh in at like in the modern era. Like it's not good. Well, imagine that. Like imagine yeah. you would have went 10 picks before. Yeah. Without like everything, the with, yeah, you you might not have ever been an eagle. I know that's insane. I might have went to a team that didn't value didn't value athletic centers and got <laughs> yeah. pushed down on the depth chart. Who knows? Yeah, I know it's Dude, crazy. That's insane. Um, You'd have found a way. I think so. You'd but, have found a way. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I've been blessed to be with Howard Mudd and Jeff Stoutland for a long part of my career too, and unbelievable head coaches. So awesome. Two like two of the best offensive line coaches. That's right. I've you were with in. Howard. I was with I Howard. forgot. Yeah. I was with Howard. He's awesome, man. Yeah. yeah. And he, man, Rest he loved peace. fundamentals. Didn't yeah. he? Yeah. He, he was, loved it. He was awesome in the sense of like, we, it didn't matter what conversation was happening in these, because he was in the off season. Rewind it. Rewind it. Rewind it. He was all he was looking at the snap or the step or the boom. Mm -hmm. He was obsessed with fundamentals, yeah. just like Stout. Yeah. I mean, he would, before every game, he would have every player on the offensive line do a detailed report on the mm. guy that they were going up against mm. and like what your plan of attack was to play well. Mm. And every week, if somebody didn't say, it doesn't matter who we're playing. It all comes down to the detail and like how we do our job and like where we put take our feet. He was pissed. <laughs> Somebody had to say that. You could say, "Hey, this end has this move. This great. This guy." So we had to, as players, before that meeting, be like, "Okay, hey, you're doing the generic like detail." It always comes down to what we're doing. So that's funny. Um, yeah, that's Howard funny. was awesome. Speaking of detail, quarterback sneak. Hmm. We got to talk about it. The NFL is about to ban it potentially you don't think so i don't think so all right well there, I, I don't know our version of it, at least everybody just says uh you know it's they're just pushing it yeah there, there's no coaching involved there's no detail to it it's just rugby first of all is that disrespectful that to rugby players off. like what does a rugby player think like what rugby's not entertaining <laughs> enough to make it into the nfl like yeah how's the nfl takes plays from basketball from how's my uh, feel about it <laughs> <laughs> is there more to quarterback sneak than what you're yeah. setting me up because you I know, know there is. I yeah. <laughs> but you know what? We just went through, like, I just did this. I took all our quarterback sneaks, whether it was TV copy or whether it was this, and yeah. and I had all the coaching points of, hey, Stout, give me your main coaching points. You know why? I, I did this in the season, actually, mm -hmm. because I was going to use it for um, talking about a fundamentals talk and really get into, like, guys, you want to know what goes into this play? And I was going yeah. to give the detail of every old lineman and give the detail of the – like, it is. It, it is I, Without getting into secrets, right? I mean, yeah. but, like, it's the detail of if every anything, person. It's, it's more about details than a lot of other plays because it's so, like, condensed. Yeah. Like, you there's no room. Be on it. Yeah. Right. There's no if, so, if one person messes that thing up, there's no question. It's, it's rough. Like, think about it. we missed one one time because the guy came off the edge because the receiver, yeah. the receiver on the edge didn't step down. Remember that? And like the and the guy and the guy made the play. The receiver didn't step That's down the on the too. edge. Yeah. And you guys up in the middle got all this push. Eventually we did. It, it, it was it took a second, but it, it we eventually got it. Yeah. But that guy slowed it down, yep. right? And so it is. It's the detail of every guy. It's the detail of Jalen and how he how he pushes. Absolutely. And, and and I know he squats six hundred pounds, and we see that all the time. And but like it's the detail too. It's the yeah. Because you're here because you're at the highest athleticism and the of of you guys, and then it's the detail that makes the play go. And it yeah. it's every position, yeah. it's every position. But where I, where I think it's cool is like that's not the only thing we did off of it. No, we created yeah. some explosive plays off of it as well. And yeah. that's what off that's what football is, right? Yeah. 
this team's trying to stop this play, but I don't know, they got they got something else. We have something that, else yeah. as well. Yeah. And we'll have more next year yeah. off of and it. And they right? can push too. It's not like we're the only ones pushing. The linebackers are pushing on their side. So and, I don't, that, and that was your point. How is it fair that they're able to push on a quarterback sneak and we can't? Exactly. What what well, how is that fair? Yeah. Right. And so we'll see. We'll yeah. see what happens. But I think there's some awesomeness to it. It's awesome. I like love it. you guys are on display. You it's all it's always about you, Isaac and, and Landon. It's everybody it and Jalen, but it starts right there. Yeah. It starts right there. And every time someone's like, Hey, how are you so good at this play? I'm like, Well, Jason Kelsey, Isaac, and I can't ever say I don't say Isaac's last name right. So every time you I go, they're like, What do you think about the O line? And I go, <laughs> or what do you think about your run game? I go, Let me tell you why the run game's working. Jason Kelsey, uh, Landon Dickerson, Jordan Mylotta, Lane Johnson, and Isaac. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want to mess up his name. Yeah, and yeah. so, like, every time I say it like that, but th- it's Isaac, it's you, it's Landon, it's Jalen. All right, let's go. Yeah, All it right. starts right there. It starts right there. We Well, you released uh, yesterday that we had another version of that in that had Fletcher Cox theme. Yeah, exactly. I gave, I spilled some beans. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not like it's like, why did we never run the version with Fletch? You know why? Why? There, that's a good question. Yeah. Because... We did this with Slay last year. We had a play. Why do you put a defensive guy in? Well, same reason the Kansas City does something where they circle around. It's they just go. fun. It's yeah. fun. Yeah. It's fun. And we're trying it to make it. it. Yeah. It, right. And I so agree. we had Slay in one last year, right? And he had one. He did a couple different things. He had him in twice. But, you know, they're going over adjustments, this and that. And it's, sometimes it's hard to predict, like, when you're going to do it. Yeah. And so I remember it was like, it was a frantic moment for us. Like, Slay! 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 Yeah. And they came yeah. running in. And he was like, that they're was, not ready to go in. <laughs> they're not ready to yeah. go in. They're not standing there with all the other wide outs that aren't in or right. and so we got really frantic about it. i'm like that was and it worked yeah right I, he didn't do anything he just did some weird motion and ran back out but there people were looking at him and then you guys could have gone bad it could have been like a delay of game or something. <laughs> it could have yeah. yeah yeah and so like we were it was always on our mind and so sure. for whatever reason in the in the regular season we're like yes let's call us get fletcher in there this and yeah. that and then in the playoffs we're like i don't know do we want to do yeah. that it, it, <laughs> it's one of those things where you got to be up some scores to like we're, we're pretty comfortable we're right. gonna we're gonna do something fun we're gonna do something fun i still remember when we repped it for the first time he pushed <laughs> Jalen before he even had the ball. Like he was so fired up to do it. That's another reason. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, we got to wait till he has the ball on the snap skirt. And then it was so much force. Yeah. Like Fletch is one of two guys in the NFL where I've noticed their grip strength. Yeah. Like when, especially in his prime, when he would grab you, it was like, Oh man, this this is an emasculating feeling. Like this guy has complete control over me right now. There's like two guys I can think of. Him and for some reason Clay Matthews had the same grip strength. Interesting. Where they would just grab and you're like, man, this guy's got the strong hands. And you had to and you had to go against him quite often. Yeah. Especially when he was uh, young in his career, they'd have him play a little bit more nose Uh and up back when Billy Davis was the defensive coordinator. Straight three four. And I was like, okay, this we gotta rev up for this play. (laughs) Now Fletch definitely asked me multiple times, "Hey, we we got the we got the quarterback sneaking with Fletch," and I, and and sometimes because they're fired up to do it. They're too. fired up to yeah. do it. I think I think I think on the Super Bowl, I just lied to him. I'm like, "Yeah, it's in, it's in, <laughs> it's in. We're good." Oh yeah, be ready, big guy. Be ready. <laughs> I think that's it, Coach. Unless perfect. Do you have anything for me? Shoot, uh, yeah. Yeah. Don't yeah. make something up. No, like, I do. If you want to ask me a question. I do. Um. So then I, I can't. Let me see exactly. We sent Jason the. Um, <laughs> the uh, the uh, kegs last year. Did we go two or one? One last we year. We just did one. Yeah. And uh, you know, and that was a cool way it's to say you're coming. Lo- one keg is a lot. It's a lot. So we shouldn't send two. <laughs> is that what you're about to do? <laughs> Lord, no, Lower Marion is delivered. This is from from Tyler because Tyler. I said Tyler. Lower sure. Marion beverage. Lower Marion beverage. Yeah. All right, I'd, I'd like a free keg out of this as well. <laughs> is delivering Kelsey a keg of Natty Light next Monday. His <laughs> request. My my first beer I ever had was Natty Light, so it's one of my uh, go tos still. To that was day. a good college beer. It was. That yeah. was a great, it was super that was cheap. A you get thirty of them for like, I think at the time it was like twelve dollars or something like that. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. yeah. Did, you, did you in Ohio? You go through the uh, drive-through to get the beer. Did they have those? No, they no. didn't have those. No, those were the best. Did yeah. you never have one of those? You've never I don't done think that. We did the drive-through. So you had the drive-through. You walk, you went in, and there's just beer and cigarettes and cigars, yeah. and that's all you could really get there. I think you get some like chips and stuff like yeah. that too. And you yeah, was, was this an alliance? This was, was an alliance. Mount Union. This yeah. was an alliance. Right. But anyway, expect the keg of beer. Uh, Perfect. Natty Light. Uh, I'm gonna see if uh, you if might I need to come over too. and help me drink. I'll, I'll definitely come over and drink Fuck it for yeah. sure. <laughs> um, 
I guess I have I have one more question yeah. that I've kind of genuinely always wanted to ask you. As I like think about like what's next, right? I've always thought coaching, right? And whether it's at the I think I know now whether it's at the high school or whether I try and do something in the NFL, mm -hmm. I I want to still stay in the game. I don't know if I'll ever be able to leave entirely. Do you have first of all advice or like what are the pros and cons of coaching in the NFL? Yeah, I mean, I think the pros is exactly what you said. You're you're around it. You can't shoot. You'll be able to do this until you're 45, like Brady. But you, like you say to yourself, <laughs> I can't do this anymore. Or mm -hmm. in my case, I wasn't good enough to do this at this level. But I can help other people. Well, you're missing a calf. <laughs> <laughs> I did play after that. Did you? I did. Uh, but I am. I'm missing half a calf. Uh, but like, I think that's the the thing. Like. You can help your servant, right? You you yeah. help serve guys to help them accomplish everything you ever wanted to accomplish. Like that's special, yeah. right? And then it's right. We talk about this all the time. Like it's the relationships that don't. You're always that. You're you're still part of a team, yeah. Right. You're still part of a goal to win and to get better every day. And and you, so you have these relationships with the with these guys. Like that's the that's the huge pro of it, right? Sure. And shoot, like those are the two things that come to my mind right away, right? And and, and you're obsessed with it, right? You're obsessed with like I don't have any other hobbies. Yeah. Like, I don't like to play golf. I don't do any of that. One of my favorite things to do is is like go home, spend time with the kids, like in the off season. Yeah. Go home, spend time with the kids, right? Um, whether I'm doing some, play, we're usually playing some sort of sport or whatever, you know, eat dinner, spend time with my wife on the couch. And then, you know, once we've, we've talked and we're going to put on a show, put on the show, boom, laptop on, and now I'm watching something. I don't, I'm watching something on, on football. On this screen. On this screen. <laughs> here's, here's Desperate Housewives. And then every once in a while the phone comes up and you got three screens going on. <laughs> Desperate Housewives, not the, the, that, I don't even think that's not, a show. There's uh, there's the Kardashians is up here, right? Kardashians up here. Brett, Brett's a big Kardashians? She watches the Kardashians. Okay, right. She's a reality TV show. She likes reality oh, nice. TV. I'd be like, what the hell is this? She's like, I don't know. It's just not. So she'll watch that and I'll, and I'll watch. I'm watching it too, you know. What I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but like, and then I'm watching whatever quarterback sneak fundamentals, whatever, or whatever it is. They, like that's that's what I like to do. So, but anyway, you get to do continue to do what you like to do. The cons, right, is the is the time. Yeah. It's always about the time away from the family. But it doesn't have to be as long as when you're home, you're home. Yeah, like you're present. Well, you're watching, you had already been home and now you're watching the Kardashians yeah. and now you're watching this. That's okay. That's, that's part of bonding. Right? That's part of bonding. And so, what Can Brett. Can you believe <laughs> that Kim is doing? Yeah. What Brett used to do for me when, when uh, we were dating and she would be like, she would take the uh, notebook. Yeah. And I would watch the game after the, after the game. This is in, and I'd say, all right, um, number, number, uh, I was coaching receivers at the time, uh, Bo, 82, uh, minus. Tell him that I want him, and they, and she was writing the really? notes down, and then that, okay. that went away once we got married. She didn't, she didn't want to do that anymore. <laughs> but uh, but it is. Bait and switch. <laughs> I'll write it down. I'm done writing it down. <laughs> I, I, I ask her pretty much, I say it once a month. I'm like, will you scribe for me in this? She's like, no. <laughs> Not even a little bit. And so, uh, but yeah. it's time away, it's time away is, the, is the hard thing. But I know how much my kids, I, I know how much that was when they stood on that podium yeah. and at the NFC Championship game or, and we hugged and this and that. Like, and I know how I felt like having a dad like that was a, a high school coach that I was always having access. Hey guys, do you want to go to the high school gym to to run around and, yeah. and play? And then be like, I know a guy that has the keys. I know a guy that has the keys. <laughs> I actually did that for my son's baseball team last year. Yeah. Um, something like I don't know if it got rain or what something went down Took we, the we went to the indoor and we were and we were throwing <laughs> grounders awesome. and this and that so there's negatives of not not being there but that's just about your choice too of like hey when I'm there I'm there and then look at all these perks that you grew up that you're going to grow up with having yeah you know so that's awesome yeah Shoot, thanks for having me, bro. No, thanks for coming on. Yeah. And um, if if Brett's a reality TV fan, make sure you guys avoid catching Kelsey with my brother. It's a tremendous. Uh, oh, shit. I forgot <laughs> that. Don't yet. watch it. Don't, don't watch it. it. <laughs> I'm, we're watching it. Is it on Netflix? It's on something. I'm sure it's it's in the digital verse somewhere. All right. Appreciate you, Coach. Yeah, thanks for having me. That was fun. Yep. Welcome to the New Heights post interview interview brought to you by Accelerator Active Energy Drink. Hey, hey. See this tweet? You see this tweet by my head coach? You don't downgrade him. You don't come after him for doing everything right and having a press conference about roots. Whoever the tweeter is that tweeted this, he's garbage.
attacking a head coach who does everything right. Are you kidding me? Criticizing a coach over a press conference. Where are we in society today? Come at me. I'm a man. I'm 35. I'm drinking accelerator active energy drink with zero sugars, natural caffeine, plant-based thermogen gen thermogenics. It's got tons of great flavors. This one right here is Rocket Pop. Make it pop off like a rocket. I'm a man. I, I'm 35. I'm drinking Accelerator Energy Drink. You can find Accelerator at Target, Albertson, Safeway, Quick Trip, and Hy-Vee. There it is. Nick Sirianni. What'd you think, Trev? I see you, coach. I see you, coach. I mean, I was pumped. I don't. I wasn't expecting the guns to be out. Were the, the guns out the entire day? Did you so ever we put in, those freaking things away? <laughs> they were only out for the Nick Sirianni episode. We were in Indianapolis. Thought it would be a good <laughs> idea to do uh, one interview in honor of uh, the Pat McAfee show. Uh, you know, we're in Indy. We're in his uh, his home ground. Uh, thought I'd get the guns out there, and then also mm. that's a dog dog culture shirt. Uh, yeah. Nick Sirianni preaches dog mentality all the time. So dog, sun's out or no sun in any in the winter, guns out. You already know, man. Were you uh, were you nervous to? Were you a little nervous? It was weird. In room? I'm not gonna you lie. Seemed, I mean, you me seemed and, like you were you were you were smooth though. You didn't seem like you were too nervous. Well, yeah. Nick and I obviously have a great relationship. Um, it is obviously an interesting dynamic, and it was the same thing with Howie. Like whenever you're interviewing somebody that's you know your your head coach or your GM, uh, but. You know, I got a great relationship with those guys, and Nick is such a charismatic, uh, you know, just genuine human being. It's easy to have a conversation with him. You know it. Well, that thing was powered by our friends at Accelerate a Drink. As I kind Ooh. of what um, it's, it's I've drank I've <laughs> drank that. There. Yeah, it's already over. Um, no, but seriously, he went over the flower speech, dude. That was an iconic one that he got crushed for early in his career. Um. That is really, I mean, if you look at the stats, it's it's paid off to be a good since speech. He, since he said that, you guys have been rolling. What is the weirdest coaching metaphor that you've ever heard? Man. I got a few good Some, ones. I, I've already actually mentioned this on the podcast, and it's so weird that now I use it. Uh, but whenever Stout is talking about a tough run play, he mm -hmm. says, hey, it's like pounding salt up a fat lady's ass. And I don't know what it means. I just, <laughs> I don't know what it means. I just know it's not a play we want to run. It's going to be hard. Uh, my guy Eric Bieniemy always says, uh, "You got to give ourselves a chance to have a chance," and that one always just kind of goes right over my head because I was like, "Well, is, doesn't that just mean like give ourselves a chance? Like, aren't you implying everything that could possibly happen after you to have a chance?" Like give yourself a chance just doesn't, doesn't so that like means ha having a chance be after like that in position to have a chance. Yeah. It's kind of like another way of saying that you, you yeah. got to give yourself a chance, meaning you got to get in position to have a chance. Yeah. But do, couldn't you when just like throw it? that is under this like a two minute phrase? Oh, this is like an everyday thing. Yeah. This is like an everyday. Every day. Yeah. This is like an everyday because you're fellas, take, we have to be able to, to give, give ourselves a chance to have a chance. Like you're going you're, you're kind of it's ingrained in me it's ingrained in me this is how much it said it's ingrained in me it's ingrained in me to give myself a chance so i have a chance like that's how much so i've heard it so so this would come up like you're talking to eb in right at like offensive meeting ends you're, you're done for the day you're going to dinner and you know that if you don't get there quick enough those chocolate chip cookies are going to be out and you're going. like man eb i gotta uh, it's nice talking i didn't give myself a get, chance i gotta go get these i gotta give myself a chance to have a chance and in order to do that, I got to go. <laughs> Nick is stealing our just turn it off and turn it back on motto yeah. for the future of the team speeches. I tell you what, that's pretty – it's a good one to have. Turn it off, turn it on. Just Restart that thing. Turn Reboot. It off, turn it on. I'm glad you just reminded me of that because watching this – Nick literally asked me yesterday. We were talking about this, and he wrote it down from the combine. He writes down ideas for team speeches, and we were just talking about this, and I had forgotten it. And I just remembered it watching this interview again. Turn it off, turn it on for the team speech. Works every single time. Works every single time. And ladies and gentlemen, if you're having problems, just reboot. Oldest trick in the book. Dude, so, I mean, it was an unbelievable interview. But let's be real. Did he get you the beer that he promised you? He said if you're okay. coming back, you, yeah. That's right. Did he get you the yeah, beer? Yeah, he did. He, 
I got the keg sitting outside right now, and luckily it's cold enough that it ain't getting warm. Um, it's untapped. I'm waiting to tap it. Probably will tap it this weekend on St. Patty's Day. Um, <laughs> that's right. Always yes, a it's a one. keg of uh, Natty Light. Natty Light. I know. Well, I, you know, natural. listen, I know there's a lot of beer light. snobs out there that are like, Natty Light. And listen, I love a good beer. I love a good, you know, craft, IPA, hazy beer. IPA. I love, I like beer in general. Doesn't matter what it is. Um, but if you're going to give me a keg of something that I'm going to have to drink a lot of, I'm going to go with a Natty Light. First Can't beer be, I uh, ever had. I, I kind of made that mistake. There's a, there's a heavy beer out in Kansas City called Tank 7 by Boulevard. And yeah. um, Boulevard Beer Company, and um, yeah, I tried to go through that in a keg. That is the hardest because it's a heavy beer. It's a lot yeah. of spices. That's yeah, a lot spices. of beer to be, and you don't, you know, I mean, you need something like a like a Natty Light, like a Bud Light, something that's just yeah, smooth a, and crisp. Just just to j- just this hair above water, and <laughs> it's going to be delicious. I can't wait. I'm going to make a fire outside. It. I'm going to invite a bunch of guys over. I just got. I got like 50 pounds of one of these cows out there in the freezer. We're going to make a bunch of burgers and drink some Natty Light. It's the first beer I ever had. Actually, the first beer I ever had was Milwaukee's Best, technically. Mm. And then I was like, what is this? That's, I don't like the taste of this at all. Yeah, that's was, one step above piss. I was 15 years old or 14 or whatever it was. And then I went and had a Natty Light. So. Kids, drink responsibly. One last thing from the Nick Sirianni episode. He did mention that he wanted a black-on-black this is his favorite hat, our uh, Ooh, Life Foundation. Underdog. The underdog. Apparel. Yeah. Yep. That's this sweet, is, man. Uh, Dang, well, now this I got to get a new hat that he requested. And uh, we had him made just because of that episode. So, oh. Okay. Okay, Coach nope. Sirianni okay. Being, being a trendsetter. I got to get better at putting on hats. So, <laughs> we got you the black on black, Coach. <laughs> you, yeah. as requested. As requested, hope you you guys enjoyed that Nick Sirianni interview. Um, I know, <laughs> I know, I'm sure going to try and get my coach on here one day. Coach, if you're listening, how about dude? So I I ran into to... and, I ran into Andy out in Indy at the combine. And? Great mood. I don't know why he's in a great mood. <laughs> Actually, I think I know why he's in a great mood. Probably because he has like 11 picks in the draft. Yeah, well, Andy just won a Super Bowl. Um, and oh. uh, yeah, he forgot about that. Um, and then, uh, you know, I think I'll text. I'm going to text him. I'm just going to take care of this. All right. Well, you we got to have then. the Andy Reid in. You got it. I won't, I won't bother you, Coach. I'll let Jason hit you about it. Come on. You got to do it. It's got to come from me. <laughs> now you're making it. All right. I'll ask like, him. All right. I've asked him a million times on the show, so I might have to, like, if I see him, I'm going to FaceTime him. There you go. That's a good way see to do it. See how he's doing. You big FaceTime guy? Yeah, big FaceTime guy. FaceTime. I hate FaceTime. Well, that about wraps up this episode of New Heights. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube to the New Heights channel so you know when new episodes are coming out. Listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to check out that merch over at homage.com slash New Heights. You heard the man. Once again, New Heights is presented by Wave Sports and Entertainment and brought to you by our friends at Fireball. <laughs> Shoot them back, baby. Follow the show on all social media platforms at New Heights Show with one S for fun clips throughout the week. Um, and thanks to our production and crew. We uh, we always, you know, are very fortunate that we uh, we have stuff to talk about on the show. And um, <laughs> it's, uh, we just appreciate you guys so much for providing us with this content, man, and uh, making us look good when we know we're just a bunch of dummies up here. And thank you to all the 92 percenters, baby. Hey. Woo. Always appreciate you guys uh, tuning in. And uh, please let us know what you guys think of this, uh, this episode and obviously the Nick Sirianni interview. Uh, can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Until the next time, peace.